disciplinarian and not taking no shit. You said Bill Parcells is? Yeah, because he was the like big two coach back then. Yeah, yeah. But they just say, like, he just, LT come to meet the film room or me late as fuck, and he just. Nah, I think that's a valid point. Like, if there's a player that's that good, like, there's there's just got to be different rules, honestly. And like Blake yeah, said, no, Lawrence yeah. Taylor having the reputation, there's very few people who people are like, yeah, this is the greatest player of all time. If you got that player in your team, he kind of do what the fuck he wants. Yeah. Especially if he's still. Yeah. Everybody yeah. wants to keep their job, dog. It's like he was a head coach. Like, you, they're, you're going to be gone before he's gone. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> quite a little thing what he wants to do. Have that's you guys ever seen the videos of Bill Belichick when, he, when somebody mentioned Lawrence Taylor around him? Oh, oh, yeah, he goes from like, you that. know, Bill's face uh, on to Cincinnati. And they're like, yeah, so can you tell us about Lawrence Taylor? And he'll be like, <laughs> yeah, so listen here. And it's like, yo, what the fuck? Where did, when did you get teeth, bro? Oh, you, you know what? You Did you all ever watch the um, when they did the NFL, I think it was top 50 thing, where they had them all sitting around that table? It was like um, it, Bill Belichick. Was that last year? That was last year, right? I feel like that was right when we started the pod. I think that was 2019. Oh, okay. I know what you're I talking. I do remember about. that though. I, remember I do remember that though, because they had people for like every different like skill position, and Bill was on there. They did, but like Bill shit. Belichick was one of like the um, the permanent like um, mm-hmm. members of that show. Yeah, and yeah, there was there was lots of moments like that on there with him. But it's like you get him out of that that mode where he has to be the head coach of the Patriots. He just needs to be like the, the football nerd that he is, and it's like you see all kinds of a range of emotions for him. And they actually brought Lawrence Taylor onto the show, and now you're saying that I'm remembering that conversation. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember him just like cheesing, talking about Ed Reed. Like that motherfucker loves Ed Reed. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. hella funny to see somebody like Bill Belichick, who's just so stoic all the time. Like he's like that now when he talks about Aaron Donald. Like he's just as hella happy to talk about him. That dude yeah, is a it, for real, for real football nerd. Like, nerd. <laughs> nerd. Nerd. I think when we talked about that game where they, you know, they only passed the ball three times, and I think. That's uh, like the only other time that it happened was like 1972. I guarantee yep. you he knew that date. Like I guarantee he knew the teams, who the rushers were, what the score was. Yeah, that's probably one of them weird things where he has like the game ball of that up in his man cave. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like the Bills you know, passed three times. <laughs> my dad was the quality uh, assurance coach at the time for that team. So crazy mm-hmm. story, right? Yeah, man. So we back yep. episode 40. It's been a little, we took a little break. But we back in the building. The 40 a little break. So it was a little holiday oh break. Hey, we, we get what uh, you gonna do for the 40 ball. 40, 40 ball. ball. <laughs> <laughs> we back with 40. 40 underrated number. I didn't even look people up, but I feel like I I know Mike outside wore 40, right? Fire. Did he? Kemp. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, those are the only two I know. Yeah, yeah that's Kemp. the original Gruden grinder. <laughs> <laughs> Mike outside was the only white football player I liked growing up. That motherfucker looked ridiculous. <laughs> he was like Absolutely. cold. Absolutely care. ridiculous. Nah, he was filthy. I don't know what his numbers look like. He probably wasn't even that good, but he was fucking nice. He had uh, like 26 touchdowns for a total of 26 yards or some shit on his career. <laughs> I'm about to look right now. Mike oh Alsop. my God. He definitely has CT. Nah, he was he was delivering such punishment. I feel like everybody else got TT. Nah, I know he's like he's probably a legend back in whatever town he went to high school. Oh, <laughs> oh you <laughs> know it. You like, know it. <laughs> yeah, he probably rushed for like four thousand yards in one season. Oh yeah, he's from Jolette, <laughs> Il- Illinois. Okay, oh, if, you, you, if if you guys had to guess how many career rushing yards he had, what would you think? Is it over a thousand? Yes. Is it over two thousand? Yes. God damn. He played he played for 10 years. Okay. Oh, he, I probably, say, he probably cracked 4K. Yes. I, he, didn't, he cracked 4K? I wouldn't have guessed he that. Had, he had 5,000 yards, 58 touchdowns. He never had more than uh, – he had more than 800 yards twice. That was 98 and 99. Hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 58 touchdowns is kind of wild, actually, for a, fullback. a player of that caliber. His career-long run is 47 yards. <laughs> I feel like I've seen that shit on YouTube too. Damn, he had 300 receptions for another 2,200 yards, 13 more touchdowns. Damn, 47 yards is nuts for your career long. And you played what 14 years? You said 10 years? What was 10 it? 10 years, six Pro Bowls, three All Pros. Hey, I don't know fullback numbers, but he got to be up there for fullbacks because those are some healthy ass numbers. The only fullbacks they ever talked about was like him, 
uh the nigga from the charge what was that Lorenzo Neal? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh was, what was it Ron McLean? Yeah, He's close a little bit. Yeah, he was cold. Yeah. What was it? Max Strong? Max Strong was a good fullback, right? I feel like Max Strong we only knew because we lived here and he had a fucking MVP in his backfield. Yeah, he was probably good though. He was a big nigga. Hey, the uh, numbers shout out to Greg crazy. Jones. Uh Greg, jo- Greg Jones was cold. Uh, Madden, Madden 07, he had the stiff arm weapon. I think he had one more. I think he might have had hands, too. Max Strong? No, no, no. Uh, Greg, Greg Jones. Jones. Oh, okay. Greg Jones. But, um, Ooh, Gail uh, Sears wore 40. Udonis Haslam. They got Michael Finley, but I swore he wore four. That don't sound right. He played a lot of ways. Yeah, he, he probably, probably very true. wore 40 somewhere. Shout out to Chicago. It's funny because when we be looking up the famous numbers, some numbers it's like, here's the ranking, here's the 700 players that wore this, and some numbers it's just like, hey, we got three people for you. That's it. I feel like <laughs> there's got to be more good 40s than that, but that's what I got. We're going to, yeah, we're, we're going to get to a pretty dry spot here with, with those numbers, actually. So, <laughs> yeah. Wait, after like uh, uh, yeah, 63. <laughs> Yeah, when it, after fifty, it's gonna get a it's gonna get a little dry. We'll, we'll figure like out something, 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 something creative. Bad. We'll figure something out. All right. We'll figure something out. The what was I fucked about to say? Oh man, see, I don't lost my train of thought now. All right, whatever. How y'all doing, man? What's up? What's cracking? Shit, I'm good, man. It's new with you. Just work. Happy New Year to my brothers. Hey man, Happy, Happy New, new Year, year both hey. y'all. Happy New Year, both you niggas, man. It's y'all niggas, bro. Bringing in the new year straight, man. Uh, to better podcasting and the winning more uh, bets. <sighs> Shout out. Start out the year strong. First bet of yes. the new year. One. Let's go. Yes. Give I'll me. settle for one of the two. We could do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if Tyrell get rich this weekend. I, we will. Speaking into existence, we'll tell the story how we know we're getting rich later. I know some shit's about to hit for us. Oh yeah, but yeah, that one has been to. a good, solid first week of the new year. Uh, one of my homeboys got COVID, so I was a close contact, so I got to take uh, some extra time off work. So that was kind of fire. Shout, shout out, out to COVID. him. Hey, shout out to him. He didn't die, so no, we straight. That's all that matters. All that matters. Mm-hmm. What's new with you, Blake? Uh, not a damn thing, man. Life has been good. Life has been extremely good. So, <laughs> Professor Finesse, mm-hmm. yes, it has. Enjoying that. Um, <laughs> yeah, enjoying that. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Scotch. No, nah, yeah, it's, I broke out. It's an old. It's a birthday gift from Bree from this uh, past okay. year. So, okay, here okay. I just bring it up, celebrate with y'all, bring in the new year, do that right. With uh, the fancy we're cup doing too. a drink it out of. No, he, got the, he, he got the aerator it's joint. A, it's called a Glen Carn, man. You're supposed to swirl your, your scotch around in here, and it opens it up, and then you go like this, mm. like get the smell mm. of it, and then you take it into your mouth and like waft it over your tongue. You get all the notes and figure out what mm. you're tasting. Like that. Um, Is that yeah, for real? Or you just made all that up. It's dead ass serious. <laughs> what this glass oh, is okay. Right. If not, I would just have it like in a highball glass or something like that. Bre- breathing like, in that white man like, scotch. No, since oh, this one, I don't drink that often. Like this one, like I like to get the full experience from it. Got mm. to, got to, got to. Exactly. Uh, we're doing. Have y'all heard of Noom? Yes. Yeah, me and Bri are trying that out. Is that a ring or is it a band? Isn't it a band or something? You got it's neither. It's, it's literally just an app, but like, oh. but like you set whatever your goal is inside the app. It's like you like track your meals and all that shit in there. Like whether it be like you're trying to lose weight, gain weight, whatever it is. Uh, gain muscle but like they just like kind of coach you through like everything like as far as like your eating and stuff like that and your like relationship to food so i don't know it's been pretty good like obviously nice. not supposed to be doing this but this is like the first one of these i've had in a minute so figured no better time to do it than here with y'all so yeah no, i've been seeing that commercial a lot recently especially around the new year that that's how i got year. into it yeah everybody setting year. their goals for the year i don't really yeah. No. You know what? No. Do y'all have goals for the year? I have like rolling goals. Like I have shit that I want to get like I have stuff I want to get accomplished by like March. So it's like that's something I've been working on for a little minute. So it ain't nothing like that I started on New Year or January one. Same goals yeah. every year, you know, get in better shape, get back in the gym. Now that my knee's healing up a little bit, I can get back on my bike and get back in the gym and shit, which has been a fucking hell for me. Not being able to do shit. Damn yeah, you probably haven't been able yeah. to ride your bike for a minute, huh? 
I rode my bike to work on the day I fucked my knee up and haven't touched it since. Jesus Christ. Unfortunately. So so you, gonna... so you're good, right? You don't got any like surgery or nothing? Uh I still don't know. Um yeah, I should find out later this month if I gotta get some shit done. I'm hoping not. Hopefully. I don't think so. The 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 surgeon or whatever was like, you know, we try to do as, as little invasive surgery and shit as possible. Um, because with surgery these, you can trash. get arthritis later down the line. So Ooh, if you can heal on your own, they recommend it. So hopefully not. Yeah, Shout hopefully that straightens out for you. Yeah. Yes, sir. For real. Um, the what was I about to say, man? That keeps happening. Jesus, you you're drinking. That's why, man. Scotch up. You're drunk. Damn. No, because I'm about to say something, <laughs> then y'all go, and then like I've like be sitting here listening to your conversation. I forget what I was about to say. Nah, you're now drunk. it's all good. Okay. <laughs> that fancy Scotch opened up. All right. Got him wide open. What did you ask him? You, you, because oh, I asked if he was gonna said, have to have surgery. No, before that, we made him start talking about his knee and shit and his bike. Oh, uh, oh, you asked if we had goals, and I told you that I'm trying to get back on my bike and get back. Okay, to the gym. there we go. That's that's where we were. Yes. Okay, Jamal, you got goals for the year? No, not that I think of right now. Get money. All right. Hope you hit all those. Get a BMS chance. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm really hoping we we get a house this year though. That's uh probably nice. my goal. We're gonna try to do everything we can to get that. Be, be a real shame if it was in a rainy ass state. Real shame, I no, tell you. It's, it's gonna be here. It, the house is gonna be here, but that doesn't mean Ooh. we're gonna be here forever. It just means like, we're not trying to pay rent here anymore. Try to. Nah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, rent is fucking rent. trash. Yeah, it's going up. So fuck them. Um, but that's about it. I think. Yeah. That's it. All right. Uh, we talk every week. If we get new goals, y'all hear about the goals. Y'all hear about them. It'll come up. Yeah, so what, what y'all been uh, playing lately? I know, Tyrell, you've been big on the Hades, man. You wanna, it's em- got some it's questions embarrassing. For you about that. It's yeah. embarrassing. Yeah, so, what's, so what's, what's up with it? So like, what, like you said you beat it, but you're still obviously playing it, like a lot. So what's yes. what's going on? What's, what's, so what's happening? for both of you have played Hades or neither one of you have played? Blake, you no, I played it. Me. I played it a Okay, so Hades is a roguelike. So if people who've heard us talk about Returnal, basically like you get to the, a point in the game if you die – you start back over from the beginning of the game, like you lose some of your stuff. But this one's a little like the runs are way shorter. It's like you there. I've been seeing people online can literally get through the whole like run in like five, 10 minutes. Um, but it's like typically like 30 minutes. You you get different like upgrades and shit like that. But it's just like the story's hella fun. Like every time you die, there's different like story pieces or like every character that's in the game has something different to say to you. Obviously, the rooms change every single time. So it just makes it hella addicting. And like you get a little further one time or you get a good ass build and get further. So it's like, damn, I got, okay, it only take me 25 minutes to run through this. Let me, let me do another one. And then it's another one. And then it's another one. So it's an easy ass game to get addicted to, but the story's just been hella good. Um, and yeah, so I beat the game uh, two days ago. So essentially, yeah, you have to, I don't really think it's a spoiler, but you have to escape from hell 10 times and then you technically beat the game and it kind of gets you to the end. But then there's a story that keeps going after where it's like, okay, now do this because of other reasons. So it just, and then you get so much stronger. Like <laughs> I, I can legit get through the game without getting hit a lot of the time. So it's like, you feel hella oh, good. But then there's, um, after you beat it, you can like add additional heat. So it's like, okay, now that you've beat it or now that you've completed runs, you can make it harder for yourself. Like uh, you can add what's called like extreme measures. So you, for the most part, things are the same. Like the rooms will look different, but all the enemies do the same shit, but you can add extreme measures. So then it's like every enemy has a different technique or a new technique. So you get to the end and it's like, oh, this is a little bit different than it was the first 55 times that I did it. So it just kind of keeps changing, keeps getting more challenging. And it's hella fucking rewarding when you get to beat the game or get to the end. And it's hella frustrating when you get to the end and you die. There's been so many times I've gotten to the end and you die on like, I got one ticket health left. He got one ticket health left and I get hit and I die. So now I want to go through again. Um, I think I've put, Oh God, (laughs) I think I've put 130 hours in. God damn. 13th. I mean, mind you in that time, like I was like short shifts where, you know, working less time at work and then we had the Christmas break and then like close contact shit. So I've been at home a lot. (laughs) Snowed in. (laughs) We got snowed in for, you know, three days. So, yeah, I I put some fucking work in, but yeah, it's it's been so fucking fun. It's I I it won like 
two years ago when it came out, it won like every game of the year award it could possibly win. It won a game of the year award last year because they re-released it. And I absolutely see why. If I had found this game beginning of 2021, it came out on PlayStation 5 in August and I had just put it off. If I had found it in August, it easily would have been my game of the year. Easily would have been game of the year. It won yeah, something yeah. called a Hugo Award, which is the only game to ever do so. I don't know what that award's for, but it's the only game to win. I did see did that. Did you win a Pulitzer too? No, I didn't get the Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pull, pull your mic closer to you, Jamal. Yes, sir. Oh wow the oh. the Hugo Award is an annual literary award for the best science fiction or fantasy works, which makes sense because it's like it's hella like Greek mythology mixed. It's just and with a good ass story attached. It's really one of the best like story games I've ever played. Like the story is absolutely incredible. Damn, really? Man, I was kind of yeah. When I talk to them niggas. I don't yeah. really be paying attention to what they be saying. I'm like, all right, let me go in hell and. Kill somebody's yeah, monster. so if you're not, I guess if it's that good, I'll start attention. paying attention. <laughs> yeah, no, I because like, yeah, and it shit just changes people's attitudes towards you. Start changing, like the other characters. No, it's not like when you die, it resets in a way that nobody knows that you were trying to get out. So like, people are like, damn, you're back again. Like, <laughs> the fuck is going on? Damn you! Oh shit, you did this. Okay, like, oh, we heard about this thing. So it's it's just hella cool. Mm. So like, you'll end a run. And it's like, oh, well, fuck, I did this thing on this run, so I want to see what this person's got to say about it. And, okay, I talked to all the people. Shit, I might as well start another one real quick just to see, you know, what changes and what happens. So it's, yeah, it's it's great. I love it. All right, noted. Yeah, I, think, I will read those messages. And I, yeah, I think I made I, it to, like, the fourth boss or something like that. I was, couldn't get yeah. past that. I got to back. one. That bitch beat me. I was like, fuck this. Let, that's his sister, ain't it? You let it hold up on you? No, no. Yeah, you start beating her at one point. Huh? I, can't I said no, it's I not your sister anyway. Oh, okay. No, oh, was, okay. I'm talking about a different kind of beat anyway. Oh, wow. This guy. <laughs> All right, Kratos. Yeah. And they got that in there? They do. It's not the same as Kratos. You don't got to. Remember on, on God of War when it was a fucking team? You had a lion shit up. <laughs> Yeah, he had to do the little button presses and stuff. <laughs> Dog, I was I was twelve manually putting him through the beats. They had a game open with that, and then the last one open with you burying his life. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> wild. That's kind of fucking wild. You try, try to play the mini game with her too. Dog, I, I can't wait for that game to come out. That shit. That won't be this year. I think it'll be next year. I think it'll be this year. Got pushed back. Oh yeah, no, I, just don't think, think, I just don't it, think it'll. It be got this pushed year. into this year. I don't think it'll get pushed back again. I think it'll be anyway. this year because I think what they've been doing lately is probably just straight up polish. Because I'd imagine this game is probably built on the same exact engine as the last one, which means they probably just want to make sure this shit is like speak and span perfect yep. when it drops. And you know they're putting all their resources behind it because this is a, this is a flagship game. It's the them. one. It's the same one. It is. It's the, besides yeah. Last of Us, like it's basically the one. I mean, yeah, Horizon's and, dope. No, no, don't hold me back on that. But I'm sure. saying, like, it's them too. It's God, yeah. God of War and, and, and Last of Us. That's that's For PlayStation's sure. bread and butter right yeah. now. Horizon's mm-hmm. fighting to be in that category, which we'll see yeah. what this next one looks like. I think and it, which Grand Trism is going to surprise a lot of people, though, when it come back and sit on that throne with the, the, the three of them. Cause I hope so. It, that game's just fucking hard. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I've like, had a Grand Trism so for years. Uh, I had the one on PS3. Okay, you had the weird ass one then. The one on PS3 was weird as hell. I think. Was that five? I think. Yeah, but it was like the whole entire game wasn't there at the start, and like the more parts just became available for download and shit. Oh, and I know like, I bought that shit late. I bought that hella late, or it yeah, didn't they, even know if I bought it. I might have gotten shit. on PS Plus. Yeah, they added like um, crash damage like later on in that game, but only for certain cars, and only That's certain weird. cars had interiors too. It was weird. That's the weird. Fuck? The racing was always super solid, though. I mean, they get that part down, but it's like, yeah, they did some weird shit because, like, Forza was, like, dominating, and they were trying to implement parts of Forza into Gran Turismo when the two aren't ever supposed to be the same thing. It's like they're two different experiences. So, All right, what have y'all been playing? Y'all been playing anything new recently? I haven't really played the game, like, all week. I haven't been working so that much. I've been tired. I was playing Death Stranding before that, but... I work so damn much. I'm never playing Death Stranding. I'm not trying to do my. <laughs> <laughs> so that game's really just a fucking delivery game. 
You really get off work and do a U simulator. <laughs> Duh. It's I had something weird. on there. It's like, yo, you got to take the. It's like, you got to deliver shit. But then there's like these weird ass ghost things come from the ground and this black ink be trying to like kidnap you and chase you and you got to like hide Sweet and sneak baby. around ghosts. Yeah, then like I put the like baby. 30, 40 hours in that game probably. Like I'm, I, I, it's it's weird. I'm 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 fucking with it. It's just like man, after a long day at work, I just do not want to play that shit. But. <laughs> I think that's another good thing about Hades because I do have that feeling sometimes where it's like I don't want to come home. Like not this game specifically, but like I don't want to come home and deal with like a Last of Us kind of game where I gotta like tap in. So like it used to be like yeah, just come home and play some game of Two K or Madden. Madden's just so trash now that it's like I don't really be wanting to play that. So Hades is a good game you can just jump in and like not really pay attention to fully. Yeah, like some around. good mindless fun. Kind of exactly. something like that. Yeah, that's why like I like playing... Uh, damn, I need to go back and finish it. I'm pretty far on it. Uh, what's, the, what's the zombie game, Blake, that Microsoft used to make? Microsoft? Oh. Yeah, well, he used to uh, on Xbox. I, not, not Dead Island. Dead I, Rising? What, is Nick, Dead Rising? Dead Rising, where he used to be running through uh, the mall. Frank? Yeah. Like the last yeah. one they made where they got rid of that timer shit like on the day... It's just all open world, but you're not on that timer. Remember how you you had like a time limit to do certain stuff, or you couldn't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. The last one they got rid of that, so you can just do all kind of shit on there. When I just like don't want to think about it, then I just be playing that. Nice, fun ass game though. Yeah, that's what's up, man. I've been um, I got back on Destiny, so I've been playing that. That's kind of whenever I do get a chance to play the game, and then I finally got back on Halo again today because I got stuck in the campaign. And I was like, I'm not trying to do this shit was frustrating <laughs> but i made some progress today this shit glitched out on me too for a second but i just killed myself and the thing reset and it was all good nice but yeah it's been fun i've i wanted uh, to get into destiny i just know that i'm so far behind like story wise and obviously like you're the not, people i know who play the game yeah, yeah, but you can't be behind now like they just you get to play all the content from the jump now so you just jump in and start playing oh, okay Man, they yeah. just, just, Basically, just like, alien shit. I played Destiny 2 before they went free to play, and it's like it was a completely different game then, and all my shit from then is basically gone. So, I, when I got back uh, on here to play, okay. I basically started all the way over. So, gotcha. oh, yeah, Destiny is free to play now, now huh? Mm-hmm. I thought it was always it's free to play. play. No, oh, uh, wow. it hasn't always been this way. This is year five of Destiny 2, I believe, as well. So, um, it's, it's quite different. Hmm. Okay. Still good as ever though, um, and then I think what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, that's probably all the things. I've, well, I got back on Madden a little bit too. That's about everything. I'm playing play Destiny in a minute. Y'all watching any new movies or anything recently? Hold on, let's skip that because we got movies after this. So oh, okay, bet. Uh, TV shows. Okay. Since we had reported last, basically, almost all of Hawkeye aired in the time that we weren't recording. Oh, would you that's guys not true? Go? There was like what well, we only got two episodes. That's, probably, no, that's not true. We, nah, we might have got like it was six, four, six episode maybe. series. Yeah, we yeah. we talked about the finale on here. There's did no we? way, Blake. No, I think I did. Finale. No, I did because remember I said nah, they had her whooping uh King Kingpin's ass, and that's bullshit. Yeah, yeah and okay, I said like yo, was, yeah, because yeah, we were talking about wait. like yo, how that nigga <laughs> nigga got hit by a car and an explosion. <laughs> We recorded, an episode right right after, on football pod or we, re- we recorded an episode right after Christmas. No, you were drunk. Okay, I'm remembering shit. Um, Damn, so skip Blake. that. Then, um, what? The only other thing on Disney Plus that came out was Boba Fett. You guys watch that? I, I watch have it, not man. watched any of those yet. Uh, awesome first episode. I did. Cool. I did get caught up on Power though, <laughs> and that is a wild ass show. Uh, I think it's back t- tomorrow after it's, it's a little break. Tomorrow, okay, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I know Tommy's uh, just said his new show's coming next month, I want to say. So I'm excited for yeah. that. But the only thing I, I I'll complain about with Power, I'm going to talk about this kind of without giving away any spoilers. The only thing I no, don't okay. like is is that they make every like conundrum that the main character gets in comes from like seven different directions. Like Ghost was always under some shit from seven different directions and he'd finesse a way out of it. Sometimes he wouldn't like sometimes it would be a long he went to prison, you know, like it would be a long ass con. But like this season opened with Tariq like 
I owe this person money. This person hates me. I fuck this person over. And the cops are also I'm ducking a body me. over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ducking a body that I put another body on top of the body. Like, it's tough. I And I don't really know. It makes it a little less believable when they get away with it. It is satisfying a little bit. Um, hmm. But I will say my my favorite moment, uh, maybe in television history, is, oh my God. is, the, is, is the lawyer for Ghost being like, hey, uh, your dad told me to give you those letters. He's like, what? He's like, yeah, in case you were ever arrested for homicide, I was supposed to give you this. And Tariq opens the letter and Ghost voice pops in. It was like, I always knew you'd be here, little nigga. <laughs> That's it. The oh. whole letter. I always what? knew you'd be here, little nigga. What an awful father serious. Like of it. You can't be serious. It, an, uh, he's the worst. He is literally dead. And he pre-wrote a letter in case his child was arrested for homicide. And, and all it said was, I had actually hoped, Mr. St. Patrick, that I would never have to give that to you. Hold on. <laughs> this nigga has the audio. No, I'm on YouTube, but y'all can't, uh, obviously y'all can't see the video. Hold on. It's, it's about to, he's about to open oh the envelope. So he's sitting inside a jail cell right now because he just got arrested for um, a body so, that he just kind of helped cover up. He didn't kill the person. Um, but either way, he's the one that's getting arrested. And he really can't tell the person who actually did it. So now he's holding this envelope from the executor of Ghost's Will. I believe what I said. Oh my God, please. This music get this is killing Why does everyone me wrong? You look sad as shit right now. Daddy? <laughs> Fumble with the paper. Got the paper out. About to start reading. I knew you'd end up here, little nigga. Having Jacob Bank crooning over, I knew you'd be here, little nigga, <laughs> right where you belong. Are you kidding me? That I'm just upset funny. it wasn't Amari Hardwick's voice. Like, it was Tariq's voice. Uh, I, in my mind, like I said, in my mind, it was. And I'm sticking with that in my mind. It in my ghost. mind, it's his voice, yeah. too. Isn't that weird? Even though you just yeah. heard it in Tariq's voice. It's, it should yeah, have no, been I, him. I don't know why I heard it, too, but that's funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> you could just, because ghosts talk like that, little nigga. I knew you'd be here, little mm-hmm. nigga. Oh my god! I don't know what's gonna happen, but that I almost fell off the couch. We got a deep ass couch. I almost fell off that bitch. Do you think? Oh um, do you think so overall, cool. like Ghost was? Uh, well, okay. This you got to answer this with like, a bit of relativity, right? Because I'm, I'm gonna say, was Ghost like a bad parent to Tariq? Uh, he wasn't a bad parent to Tariq until Tariq started being a bad child. Like, I feel like Ghost, like, like I don't think that cheating on your spouse make, necessarily makes you a bad parent. Like, he's putting his kids through school. He didn't really do a ton with them, at least that they showed us. Like, no. he didn't really do anything to the kid. <laughs> like, the kids had, kind of had everything they wanted. He was just, like, a dad. Yeah. Actually, I won't say he was a good parent, because he was really just a dad that wasn't around. Like, at one point, he moved out. Yeah. He came back. He moved out again. Like, you know, he kind of had his uncle was another fucking kingpin so maybe he shouldn't have did that so i won't say he was a good parent but then once Tariq turned bad he acted like he was fucking dad of the year and Tariq was just fucking ungrateful because he was treated he, you know what he, put the, he kind of he treated his kids like pokemon or some shit where it's like he tried to give them like every available resource like that's enough for to make them like to be a yeah. good parent it's like he i want to make sure you got all the hot shit and like you got the best school you got the best everything so you're good now right but it's exactly, like nah, we actually yeah. are dad He's acting like every rich parent on a television show acts, where it's like they're just there, like they're not doing anything yeah. with the kid. They're just living their life and giving the kid money. Yep. <laughs> he, he was regularly that hard correct though, but like Ooh. Drake ultimately just probably wanted to spend time with his dad or be like his dad, and like, <laughs> or be better, or be better. Yeah. What's he got? I don't want to see Anyway, yeah, Power is a wild ass show, bro. It is. What else you been watching, Jamal? What's up? Uh, man, you I know y'all was talking about that. Uh, well, y'all said something about Yellow, so I watched a, a show called Yellow Jackets, and then I found out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys said what you got called Yellowstone or something? I've been watching Yellowstone. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, see, that's what I thought. I thought you guys said Yellow Jackets. This idiot watched six episodes of a random show. Yeah, I was waiting to talk about it with you guys. 
I told Tyrell, Tyrell's like, nigga, what are you talking about? I've never heard of that. I'm like, oh, wow. I swear you guys had yellow jackets. No. I am watched that and uh, I just been watching Black Lightning. <laughs> Some good black television. <laughs> Greatest live action black superhero show of all time. Yeah, he's a nigga Duracell Batman. Oh, my God. He literally, his chest is like the Duracell battery you had to press on and you could see the energy gauge on it. That's what his chest is like on his suit. Literally nah, the same be, shit. They be trying to like f- like fast forward on some of them scenes where he be beating people to fuck up. He definitely killed a couple niggas because there was one where like he oh, beat this sure. dude with a he beat this dude with like a like a metal rod or whatever, and then like he tried to get up and then he like kicked them in the face when he was like like trying to get up again. And you see blood just splatter all over that wall. And I swear they skip past that shit hella fast. Like that nigga died. Like, he be killing. Nah, niggas. They, you don't. They don't give a fuck in his city. <laughs> I'm I'm positive that all the superheroes we watch be killing people. Like maybe Spider Man don't because he be like webbing people to stuff, but they really be beating the fuck out of people, like throwing Bro, them like, off of stuff, breaking their backs. Like nah, they killing something. Dude, Even like, if he, it's not like, then internal bleeding, something. Dude, think about it. like so he's beating your ass right, but imagine just getting electrocuted every time he touches you. <laughs> You're going to die. Yeah, you, niggas are having heart attacks. Die. Like he's if Batman me. killed you. You suck. You deserve it. A lot of people nah. suck. <laughs> Batman got hands. Batman is deadly, bro. He does have hands, but like John Jones got hands. He don't kill everybody first, and he he punches. Like <laughs> yeah, he's he's fighting people who are fighting back. Maybe oh, Batman! Fight but Batman. Fucking fighting. <laughs> That's a t- whole different. If John Bone Jones came and beat up Jamal, Jamal might die. Yeah, no, for he, sure. I probably am gonna he die. Kicked, he Maul, kicked Jamal in the spleen for a time. Super villain. Then uh, you know, I hope you I hope you train a little bit harder on your hands. Put that Snickers back. Pow, pow, pow. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Nah, yeah, that's he, the uh, thing. Like Batman ain't young. wasting his time with like just regular street dudes in a, in a city with like maniacs like that. Like he is. He, come on, man. He ain't gonna he be is. with Snickers. Guys. Nah, we we only see this shit in the movies. That'd be over like a week. He gotta keep himself busy. Three sixty five. That city. He, he only, okay. That city got the highest crime rate on the. No, it's funny because I think somebody posted. I think Blake or Jamal might have. One of you. It was Blake. Two here. That, that, one of that you niggas posted that like that map of the crime levels, and there were some cities with way more crime. Batman got them niggas scared straight. Low key. Nah, yeah. yeah. It was like Memphis was like the most dangerous place. Nigga said some Memphis. Shit. You're stupid. <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> Superman said Batman's the most deadly person on the planet, man. Yeah. Maybe I can't he's wait. He's a vigilante. He he's Phoenix Jones, dog. The nigga that used to run around Seattle beating people up in the superhero. Wow. Shit, I, I remember I haven't he heard did. that name in forever. He, I think he, he got in trouble. I think I wanna say he started doing drugs and it's no longer fighting crime. But it is crime. <laughs> Could you imagine if like vigilantes like like crime fighters were really like a thing? Like it was just like that yeah, would be the three of them just got life in prison today. Fuck them. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out there. Oh, they all open carry and yeah, wait for it to, to pop up. White men. Hey, shout out to that man. Yeah, neighborhood Red, watch. Rotten hell. Rest some piss bozos. Ha ha ha. All right. Anyway, let's move on. I don't want to talk about that. Uh, I've been watching Yellowstone. Um, that shit's gas. For one of the best dramas I've, I've watched in a minute. Um, it's like if you mix like Sons of Anarchy with uh. I don't know a story about like ranchers and shit in Montana. Um, they just got all types of stuff going on. It's been real good. Um, what else did I? Oh, Cobra Kai's back. Started fire been on that, and then The Witcher uh, season two. It's been gas too. I need to you watch. Watched the I still haven't watched the. I've watched. I said I watched one episode. Second episode oh, okay. this week. I haven't watched it. Okay. What do you think of the first episode? No spoiler edition. I don't even know what I could tell you to spoil it, uh, but it was good. It just, I mean. Yeah, I don't know shit about Star Wars. I've Boba's been, health seems Wars. to be in a bit worse condition than uh, they kind of portrayed in The Mandalorian is all. Oh, okay. And then they showed him getting out of the um, the Sarlacc pit, too, which was cool. I did see that they were showing, like, an episode of Parks and Rec from, like, seven years ago where Patton Oswalt, like, perfectly described the scene. Obviously, they they must. Oh, have I really. saw that shit on yeah, Twitter. Like, on okay, IGN's so it Twitter zooms account. in on the Scarlet pit, and the Boba Fett reaches it, like it literally word for word is what he said. So obviously, they must have just taken it from that. Mm. Which is funny. Interesting. Uh, Maybe he might even have a writing credit on this episode. You never know. They'd be doing shit like that. Wouldn't be surprised. Extra nerd shit. Um, 
but I think uh, on The Witcher season two, I do. I like this one. Uh, well, it's it's too early to say because I'm only like four episodes in. But um, they're focusing more on uh, Cirilla Siri, and it's it's kind of closer to what The Witcher three was than like season one was. Um, so that, that's kind of cool. You get to see her like, training with the witchers and stuff like that. So it's been uh, that, that's actually been really good. I will say it's cool. Shit, yeah. I need to watch that shit still. I want to play the game before I watch it. I've always heard, I've always heard Blake say great shit about the game. I need to know what the fuck I'm watching. I feel like before I watch it, you really watch don't. It. I mean, they have all the catch up shit on on Netflix. Like they have the world of the Witcher, so you can learn about all the monsters if you want to. Mm, but it's not okay. like I'm watching it and I know what the, the hell the things are. They like <sighs> oh, season okay. one explains everything. Honestly, if you watch the little anime thing they did on there of the Witcher, you'll know enough about that world to like hop into season one and not be lost. So, okay. I gotta check in with that. I haven't mean to watch that. I've just been putting it off forever. Every time I get ready to watch, I just see something else. I just like, man, let me watch something else. <laughs> uh, Start watching one on one or the Flash or some bullshit. Y'all want to talk about any music that dropped or podcast you've been listening to in the meantime as well? Gonna drop the best disc record of all time. All right, was bitch. it a whole song? Nah, he just he no. said like two. He literally said one line, two lines actually. Yeah. I don't fuck with Freddie Gibbs. Niggas telling fibs. <laughs> I mean, you no, were on camera movie. telling on someone though. Like it, we have, there's video evidence of you snitching. That's not a fib. That was Gibbs gonna recover. Nah, yeah, that nigga was really <laughs> on Crime Stalkers. That's hilarious. Speaking of Gibbs, that they had the video of uh, <laughs> of Jim Jones. He was working out with Fabulous Mano. Davies and one other person, they were like all working out at Jim Jones's gym. Somebody said all of New York getting ready to fuck Freddie Gibbs up, <laughs> which I still want to see the video of, of uh, him and Jim Jones fighting. But that's a, a hilarious sight, like a fucking superhero, the Sinister Six. That's crazy. Yeah, no, <laughs> if, they, if that if shit went down the way they kind of saying shit went down, dog, it's a bad look for Freddie, man. <laughs> Right, they was hey, polishing man. the floors in there with his head. <laughs> Anybody wow. can get whooped, man. Like, that's not that any of us would ever forget, but people got to remember, like, you could be as tough as you want in your raps. Anybody can get whooped by anybody. Oh, yeah. That's, that's right. just the wrong person to pick. That's, that's the, a big ass dude. The wrong person <laughs> to pick. I always think, like, not that this would have been an even fight, but whenever I think of a rapper getting beat up, I just think of gunplay getting fucked up. And if you listen to gunplay's uh-huh. music, and like listen to him talk, you'd be like, this nigga's so crazy, ain't nobody whooping him up. They, <laughs> they he got jumped beats on him. Think about who put the beats on him. I don't, I don't think it would have, the way they were fucking him up, I don't think it would have mattered if he got jumped or not. It was like, oh. it, it wasn't even like a full jump. It was like tech and tag. Like people kept jumping in simultaneously. Like, okay, my turn. I'm about to put the fucking railing through his chest. Duh. Like, to be Those. fair, his hair probably weighs more than his body does. So, like, <laughs> that's not a big guy. He he, he does look award, like crazy too. Robbie Anderson for sure. Oh god, nah, that, was, that was the fun. Those inspire some of the best tweets of all time. I could be having the worst day on earth. I look up hey. those gunplay tweets. I just I'm happy all over. I just be crying. Hey, he and Woldy knows exactly when to tweet him too. I feel like you just be really having a shitty day, and he starts retweeting those old tweets. And nah. like, oh, this and they just said Magneto couldn't take that. Uh, <laughs> That the the fits out of gunplay's chest, or they oh, said, no. <laughs> said niggas threw gunplay in there like a graduation cap. Oh, no, Duh, I'm telling you. <laughs> and there's always the pictures attached with it, and it's like, well, I mean, yeah. he's not lying. Uh, what's my, what my? I think my favorite one is a uh, niggas niggas grab gunplay's legs like when you uh grab a loaf of bread at the top shelf. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah. uh, or or niggas carried him out like a a, a flat screen TV. <laughs> I was like, damn. No, I'm telling you, there's oh this video is like God. 480p too. That shit's it's horrible. the worst quality ever, and you can only tell who gunplay is because of his hair. You just see yep. fucking sideshow Bob get tossed around. do oh, you see yeah. him like That's push? It looked like yeah, problem. it looked like how they kept doing that uh that force field push in that Matrix movie. <laughs> That's not it. You just see him flying into that damn fence. Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's like when he used to spear people into the ringside barrier on fucking Oh, wrestling. my God. And he just hears Kung Yeo just yelling, Yeah, nigga. Kung <laughs> Yeo just yelling. Seems like the worst hype man ever, dude. God damn it. Holy shit. Award shows seem like a terrible place. 
Oh, fuck. Remember when Nipsey slapped the shit out that dude at the BET Awards in LA? Son of a crypto. Oh, just <laughs> oh I know his ear was fucking ringing. Nipsey got a whole fucking palm on his ear. God damn. All right. Oh, my God. RIP to a fucking goat, man. Jesus Christ. All right. You want to talk about Spider Man right quick, man? Oh, hold on. Let me shout out. Let me shout out to Speaking of a Goat. I have been listening okay. to that Chief Keef album. And the first song on yeah. that, Bitch Where, it might be my favorite song ever. <laughs> that song is so <laughs> fucking hard. Oh, my God. That's fucking hard. Yeah. Oh, my God. See Through's hard. Yeah. No. Chief Keef, I still contend, has one of the best rap albums of all time, especially one of the best debut rap albums of all time. Because uh, Love So is a good one. All right. Yeah, no, that's or was it Get Rich or I don't remember. I thought it was Finally Famous, right? Finally Rich. There we go. Finally Rich. Finally Rich. That album came out the year I got my license. You couldn't have told me shit. Oh my God. (laughs) First apartment and my wife. I thought that was going fucking dumb. Yeah, he definitely got back on his shit, though. This, honestly, for me, this might be better than that album. As an album, like front to back, I think it is. For me. For me. Okay, okay. We we often disagree on music, so I'm not even going to argue with you. Yep. I'm just going to say no. I feel like there was some like label throw-ins on 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 Finally Rich. Fall on they were this, good. This like, no miss. He had I Rick Ross on there. Miss. He had Fifty on there. Yeah, some of that shit fell for us. Like, them, why would they're not hooking up normally? I hate just, being just just put no, Tato and whoever the fuck be hanging out your house on all these songs, and it works. You got a point because I hate being sober is a fire ass song and I don't want to hear fifty on it. Don't make any sense. He did his thing too, but like it's like, yeah. come on, this ain't organic. Facts, facts. Yeah, that's all I've that's all I've been on. Right. Man, what you said about you? You brought up Spider Man, didn't you? Hey, yeah, that's what's going on? What's, what's cracking? Is that everybody? Is that uh y'all top five uh Marvel MCU movie? I guess so, yeah. Yeah, I'd say it has to pretty easily be top five. Yeah, if it's not top five, it's in my top ten. I'd have to think about it, but it was, it was man, it was it was better than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, if for for I think for what it set up, and for like what they did, and I, and I really do fuck with like the the. <laughs> I don't think that the multiverse thing obviously is fan service, but I think bringing uh, it's been long enough that I can say this openly. I'm sure. But bring in, if you're not going to, if you haven't seen it, turn this shit off. Uh, bring in Toby and Andrew back. Like, I feel like it's partially fan service and they knew that fucking crowds are going to go crazy. Obviously, it fits the story. But, like, doing stuff like that, it always makes a movie a little bit better for me. But the shit that it's set up, like, they really opened up how the next phase of Marvel can really work, I think, and, like, solidified how it can work on top of the movie just being really, really good. Um, so, yeah, I would say it's easily a top five Marvel movie. <laughs> After this movie, I swear niggas have done a, a whole three sixty on Andrew Garfield as Spider Man. Cause I swear I've never, bro. I swear I'm, what? I'm the, I swear to God, I'm the only person that liked those Amazing Spider Man movies. I don't think they're bad. People they were just okay to me, and I did. Nah. I never really heard people speak highly of them. And now people, people are like, make, there's, there's, are. there should have been a third one. This was, <laughs> he was the best Spider Man. The complaint I heard about those movies was that um, Andrew Garfield was great as Spider Man, but he was too cool to be Peter Parker. Um, yep. In that he was better than the rest of the movie. Like the movie itself wasn't as good as he was. That was like the main complaint I heard about those. Which I mean, that's fair. Yeah, niggas be slandering those it. movies. Niggas make us, niggas act like a uh, Spider Man three is better than both of those. I think Spider Man. I don't know where you hear that movie. Yeah, no. I just feel like I didn't think about them. Like after I watched them the first time, I I just didn't consider them anymore. Yeah, they were they straight. Were I fucked movies. with them. He didn't. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, I on your fan service point, though, Tyrell. Like, yeah, you're right. Like bringing them back wasn't some of the scenes that they did though. They were fan service. Like, for where sure. you had them like all working together in the lab and shit like that, and just the little moments of the three like coordinating yeah. their fight together and shit like that. It's like that. It, it was fan service. Not in a not. That's not a negative. It's not a not because they did it in the right way. Like the shit was like dope. Like you got to tie like twenty plus years of movies together. Um, yeah, and also like for them, like this is like the insane part to me is that like. They make these movies, right? And like I know Sam Raimi, he wasn't thinking about the shit when he made his his trilogy with Tobey Maguire and shit way back in the day. But it's like all these points ended with their villains, where you could easily have their villains just wake up at that moment inside yeah. of this movie. It's like 
who the hell would have thought to do that? Like, that's insane. Like, yeah, it are you so kidding me? It works so perfectly. Yeah, it, it makes no sense. Willem Dafoe comes back and like he steals the fucking show again, like as Goblin. Like he, he was in his oh, fucking bag when he turns yeah. into like when he yeah, starts yeah, doing yeah. new Goblin shit. He was really in his bag. He's fucking. Yeah, nice. Spider Man in hell. How quick do you think he had to be all these years not being able to keep doing that role when he's that nice at it though? And yeah, now he can't exactly. do anything either. Like he's gone again. Like he needs to be around. Like he's he, he got a petition. If he got a he petition, Spider Man in hell. Dog, he was like power bombing <laughs> really that nigga through like. Through each floor. Like, oh, they were going in. Yeah, I didn't I know didn't he really had the screen. I was just about to say, so I was watching like a a YouTuber kind of do like a review theory kind of video, and they were literally yeah. going through the like the Marvel it's breakdown of like well. what he has. And no, it's whatever whatever turned him the into serum? having the, the Green Goblin inside of him, yeah, the serum made him have superpowers. He has like super strength, super speed, and something else. But it's like, okay, this makes sense why all this time when Spider Man's punching him, he's just like, ha ha ha. I'm like, yo, wait, why is he not beating this old ass man up? Like, he really yeah, no, has yeah, a bunch he's of I feel like they never sure. showed the strength in the Toby one, though. I feel like they never no, showed him. I feel like not that strong. They, I, somebody they made put it was like last clip from Twitter. He like slapped that nigga at like a dinner party and he like flew through some tables. But like, if you ever seen those sure. movies of forever, you probably forget. Yeah, they didn't show but they like didn't emphasize movie, it like this. This one was like, no, he's he might he might not be Spider Man's equal, but he damn close because Spider Man's a threat. Who be pulling punches, sure, but like was punching him in his face over and over, and this nigga giggling. Nigga, he power yeah, bombed him through like fucking manic. from the fifteenth floor to like the twelfth floor. Like, yeah, nah. just, he, like remember he, that uh power bomb that uh that the um that Chris Benoit used to do where he power bomb you like three times? Remember they well, hold you, they fight. keep you. <laughs> and then they do it again. Yeah, that was uh that was Albert. Chris Benoit didn't do that shit. I thought it was Albert. He probably did. I've heard a couple guys did that shit. shit. Well, he did yeah, that Chris to him and that movie. What was the suplexes? He had the oh, suplexes. Yeah, yeah, the the he had the suplexes, the crypto crosses, and that be, frog be, splash. Be respectful. Oh, okay. That's going to be disrespectful. Don't, no, let's just move on. We don't need to talk about him. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, what else was I about to say? Um, I So, this was my... I said this to my cousin while I was back in Washington. Like, I think, like, before... Because this is before the movie came out. I said, I thought... I think this movie is going to be Sony trying to set up like their own spider verse and i think that's pretty clear like to me i I feel like that's still probably the right thing that what they what that's probably what they're doing um especially with them bringing back the other two spider-men and then um having the venom connection back and forth now and stuff like that i think they're trying to make sure that they can make their own like live action spider-man movies um i think that's probably the path forward for them as well just because so much of like what they they still own and what they have going on requires a Spider Man, and they don't necessarily need Tom Holland to probably pop up when they do like this this uh, Spider Verse type shit, but like they can do their own Spider Man movies now because like, like they, Kevin they never... Feige do it all. <laughs> I you feel can, like I'm not gonna be mad at more movies. Like I'm, still I'm not. Watch I, I won't say I'm not gonna be mad at more movies, but I just kind of like we were talking about with the Batman thing earlier today. I feel like it's kind of confusing and weird to like the average person who's not sitting watching youtube videos like wait so there's this spider-man but there's also these spider-mans who are not a part of this but they were just in that movie but this is their movie because they went back so are they like i I feel like that's doing the most and it can be confusing i guess but at the same time it's like there's plenty of people who do understand it because the movie's gonna do fucking numbers so and yeah the movie people are gonna go watch spider-man regardless people are gonna watch batman regardless it's just weird to like like how they're having there's a the Robert Pattinson Batman is his own thing separate from the Ben Affleck Bat- like that's just weird to have two of the same people being in two well, different that, movies. That that universe is time. done. Like that DC yeah. DC and then shit, even, that shit's cooked. So even like then like you that. can you can still like there are ways where you can make the two connected cuz like the Robert Pattinson Batman is a young Batman whereas the Ben Affleck one is not. So it's like they could still be the same universe. It's just not at sure. the same time. Yeah. Um yeah. but as far as like the the spider thing, like because they they also have Morbius coming in, who like references or they have Spider Man in, in a poster inside his film um, labeled Mur- Murderer, which I think is like tying into uh, the second Spider Man movie. Um, so they have like these villains and these characters and shit like that, like and then the Sinister Six stuff. Um, yeah, and vultures in it. Do, or the negative yeah, you can do like vulture. all of these other. Uh, things and not necessarily even need Tom Holland. Like you could just use another Spider Man, or you know, like there's there's different sure. stories you can still tell without him. So I feel like they're setting up their own Spider Verse, which is, I mean, like I said, like more movies for me. Like I'm 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 gonna go watch them. So sure, 
I did see Morbius just got pushed back again because of COVID stuff. <laughs> I don't. Damn. Oh, that shit pushed back to, next to April. Yeah, yeah. I I want to say Jared Leto might have gotten COVID because I kept saying Jared Leto. I, I don't know. I think he might have gotten COVID, but I know it, they said COVID stuff on set pushed it back again. You're supposed to come out next month and stuff on set is happening. No, it was supposed no, to come out this. I don't know when it was supposed, it was supposed to come, come out, out this month, it. and then it got pushed back to April. They're probably it's probably in finishing. It probably isn't like actually on set. Sarah that don't make any sense. He froze on mine too. Well, that means yeah, it's it was be fucked up. It, it no, says it was sure. originally slated for January twenty eighth, twenty twenty two. Oh, can't hear. Yeah. Oh, we about to lose him. But yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I know Jared Leto was like salty about his uh his Joker and like how much they cut out of him. Cause you do you see people they want they want the uh. There's supposed to be another version of the uh, first Suicide Squad movie. There he goes. Uh, no, yeah, I don't even don't that. even try to resuscitate that bitch. Leave that shit alone. Yeah, that first one. Hold that the might plug. Be a, that might DNR. be the worst fucking movie ever. Fuck yeah, that movie. Leave that thing alone. I don't even want to see Will Smith anymore. Leave him alone too. Yeah, man. They yeah, because he he's what? Who's he in that movie? Deadshot. Yeah, he's worst Idris Elba. Hmm. Nah, Idris Elba stole the show in that movie. Him and John Cena. Oh yeah, that yeah. that drops. That's next week, right? Okay. Um, Peacemaker. Peacemaker. The Idris Elba wasn't even Deadshot though, was he? He was someone else. Because no, like, he's Bloodsport. He's Bloodsport. Bloodsport. Okay, yeah. like like Deadshot, but with cooler weapons. Yeah, way cooler. Fucking yeah, yeah Peacemaker's next week. I I can't wait to see that. I wonder if that's just. Gonna, I wonder if they're gonna put up three episodes or just one off the rip. Yeah, I'm I'm interested in that as well. Shout out um, to John Cena. Speaking of fan service, we, in the, so Spider Man did it the right way. Doing it the wrong way is the Matrix, whatever the hell. Resurrections Thank is what you. it's called. Thank you. Res- oh my God. Matrix horse shit. That's what it's called. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's the subtitle on it. One of the yeah, worst that, films I've ever watched. Man, uh, that movie wow. sucked. Wow. Yep. I'm telling you. So what happened was it dropped. I sat through like the first 25 minutes. I was like, all right, this ain't it for me right now. But I thought there was like a lot of shit going on in my living room. I just couldn't focus on it. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to come back to it. Came back to it. I was like, wow, no, it actually is just bad. <laughs> it's just trash. <laughs> sat through to the end, though, but there's, there's lots of entertaining bad moments. But it's just like one of those, like, why did this have to happen in this fashion type of thing? Like, what? This movie did not need to be made, like, for any reason at all. If this is what the movie's going to be. And I know, I know you're gonna argue with me because you fuck with it, but people are really wasting Keanu Reeves' talent right now. Like he's coming hot off of John Wick, and they're like, "Let's put out Matrix and Cyberpunk and just slander him in public." <laughs> Nigga, that movie I don't is like it. awful. Wow. Yeah. No, I haven't heard a good thing about it from anyone who's seen it. I haven't watched it yet, but I haven't heard a good thing about it yet. Hey, to be fair, he fucking killed it in Cyberpunk, though. So. I've heard, I've dude. Heard I feel like better the, stories in this movie. I feel like the action was subpar. I was just like, I don't did know, it seem like, like it was just like a they made another one just to make another one? Like there wasn't really a need for it. It didn't seem. But can I answer? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the way that they shit off. Um. With with them basically saying that the Matrix was a video game um that neo made it's a contract of his mind so like they so the machines like resurrected neo and put him back into the matrix and like his role inside this matrix that they made was he had created like some type of vr game where people were spending a ton of time everybody knew the story of neo and trinity but they just knew it as a story like within the game they didn't it wasn't like a thing that actually happened um and then he finally his hit and his boss is uh Miss, Mr. Uh, Agent Smith. Smith, um, Smith. Yes. <laughs> Wait, so they took the first three movies, three movies, mm-hmm. I believe, and mm-hmm. just said, psych, like it was a video game. That's how they kicked it off. In, in reality, those first three movies actually did happen. Um yeah, so they pulled kind of the plug. They, yeah, so they, they pulled the plug. Neo um, gets rescued by the modern day version of whatever the Nebuchadnezzar team, the people that he was like with before. They're basically people kind of doing the same type of thing. 
Um, they take him back to the human city. The humans are now working with some of the the machines because some of the machines decided like after Neo did that thing that, oh, no, we we're going to kind of try to get along with sentient life. So they helped him build this like this crazy ass city that's underground still inside a big ass cave. Um, and then Nairobi's there, who's like the only character, I think, from the OG ones outside of Trinity and Neo. Um, and basically, like, they're like in trouble for some shit. And this is where I start getting confused. Um, this like flying robot dolphin looking machine thing comes up and plugs itself in and Neo and everybody and they all go inside the machine and like they're talking to some some chick in there and she's telling them about what they need to do. So they go back into the Matrix to try to rescue Trinity because they never pulled her out of it. And then they end up in this big old fight and they pull her out and now Trinity can fly and then they she carries Neo off because uh yep. Yeah, and they were just like flying, but like Duh, that shit just, it just looked it that makes sense why me. in the tech demo for um matrix why you could fly but you couldn't see yourself flying because you were you i guess who was Nigga, you that movie who was, was you in the tech demo you were just a regular just a random random person in the back seat of the car just shooting mm-hmm. Nigga, that yeah, movie, that, that's long just like two and a half hours i'm like bro i'm never getting this two and a half hours back like i wasted Movies. a hell of time watching that big movie. fucking trash dog yeah, fuck that movie. I was just kind of like looking forward to it. Like, yeah, I want to see this new match. I thought it was gonna have like super dope action in it. The action was fucking Same. mid. I feel they just like kept that one on the walls. Yeah, like the fights didn't look cool. I feel like they used to throw hands in those movies. Cool, like shootouts and stuff. Hella guns, nah. hella cool guns. None mm-hmm. of that. Duh, that movie is ass. They um yeah. yeah no. I watched the first one like a week before I watched this new one. And so I was really like kind of, yeah, I was like greasing myself up. Like, yeah, this is going to be good. Let's get into it. <laughs> greasing nah, myself. Man. You know. How's the, you, how's the first one, like years later? You still like it? Is it still a cool movie? Yeah, it's, it's still good. Um, Honestly, yeah, it's, it's really solid, actually. I'm not even going to, yeah. It's better than good. Um, That's a really good movie. I remember liking the first two, and I think the third one just pissed me off because of how it ended. Yeah, the third one used a lot of CG when CG still wasn't like there. And they like had Neo basically on his Goku shit, and I was like, "Come on, bro!" Yeah, yeah. Because I remember that like there was a scene in like in the park or the basketball courts where he beat up like a hundred thousand niggas. Like that's that? two. Oh, that two? Okay. I think I'm pretty sure that's two. Because then he like, he goes to to the the um the keymaker lady's house. I think after that, I think or the Oracle. I can't remember, bro. I haven't seen that. I definitely haven't seen that in over 10 to 15 years. Yeah, I, I didn't watch. I think I watched three twice. That was it. Um, but yeah. All right. On from the bullshit. Um, There's a little battle rap shit, but they're like basically making like their own, like a lot of the top tier battle rappers are making like their own league. Basically, they call it Midnight Madness. Um, Battle rap's been like really big on like Twitter spaces, uh, like the little uh, audio chat room things. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're basically like, organizing this event where it's it's like kind of taking it back to the essence, where it's like you have just people meeting up like in these secretive battles, uh, putting their own money up, and the winner takes all type of things. But they're judged events, um, so all these battle rappers are like making different teams of other battle rappers to go into these events and like do these. I don't know how they're gonna do it right now because like there's so many people involved. That this can't be one event. So, but they're they're saying it's not a league. I think to avoid litigation with URL because URL will sue the fuck out of people. Um, <laughs> but so if what you is like, it? Side bets, battle, like, like if it's not a league, um, what is it? Because what you describe as a league, it's it's there's there they have sponsors who are putting on the the the, the thing. They're I think they're avoiding calling it an event for legal reasons. Um, and then the <laughs> battle rappers are also putting up their own money on top of that. So, okay. yeah, but like you have, uh, I, I'm gonna say some like gun titles. Like that's probably one of the most unanimous names. Or is that the right word? Ubiquitous names within battle rap at the moment. It's, that's a team of uh, Sue Surf, Tay Rock, Easy the Block Captain, Chess. Like some heavy ass fucking hitters. They're in yeah. this. Sue's one of the captains. Um, EFB is Geechee's team of him, Rum Nitty, um, Av, Magic JC, like. Um, Real ass fucking people. Uh, Hitman yeah, Holly sure. got some team in here. Um, Bill Collector has a fucking team in here. Um, A Ward's in here. Like everybody's in. Here. Hollow to Dawn's in here. Like 
DNA's in here. This Shot this sounds like here. just off of what you said. This sounds like something that URL should have already done. Like have because the people you're naming are like people who are already like fuck with each other. Like kind of maybe not fuck with each other, but in the same like realm. Like all the teams you just named, those people kind of like have similar styles or similular content. So it seems like that's some URL should have been done. I wonder if they took it to them and they weren't rocking. I think the URL can't do this today. And the reason they can't do this today is because of like how they're set up with caffeine. Um, the the big push of this event is that they want the battles to end up on YouTube. That's ultimately where the battles are going oh, to be. Okay. And even like when they first appear, they're going to be on someone's YouTube channel. They haven't decided yet. I mean, who yet? But right now with the way URL is structured with caffeine, um, it's very hard, I think, for a battle rapper to continue to get revenue from their own battle. Like, you can't really promote your own battle. You, you have to promote the URL app. Um, yeah. And so people have a chance to watch your thing live with the URL. And then after that, you basically have to pay the app subscription price to watch the battle again. Yeah. If it's on someone's YouTube, it just sits out there and keeps collecting revenue or whatever. So that's how they want shit to go back to that, I think, or give them a chance to do that. Because a lot of these people, like even like um, A Word, who's going to be in the running for a battle of the year from last year, he doesn't have any URL battles. Um, so everything he does yeah. is on YouTube. And other people like that have come up in this era, like, uh, real real sick like he has a ton of url battles so he he can't collect from those like the like a word can so it's like everybody's trying to get their own money right now but it should yeah, be cool. it, it's been frustrating that it's not and i like what you just said makes sense i understand why it's not on youtube but like it's made it so much harder for me to like find the shit that y'all be t- like you'll watch it live and you'll talk about it and it's like oh i can't watch it right now but i want to tomorrow and it's like oh i'm not about to pay yeah, to yeah. go watch you gotta wait like, like a I'm week a, or two a month. <laughs> Summer Madness just hit YouTube this week. And that was in... <laughs> well, I'm talking about the app. No, yeah. They, it's always no, waiting yeah. for YouTube. It's over. Oh, yeah. That, but that's what I'm saying. Like, for the app, sure. But, like, if you're paying or, you know, whatever you got to do. But, like, it used to be... It felt like it used to be at least. Like, okay, give it two weeks and it'll be on YouTube. And you're not really, like, missing shit. Because people aren't spoiling that. They're like, shit, she's whatever. Uh, two weeks it YouTube. was never two weeks. It was, it was like, six months. You have to wait <laughs> hell long. And it used to feel like that one. Yeah, Smack would, they'd probably drop battles, like, from big events like that. I don't know. Like, they would do one event and, like, stretch that shit out for, like, half the year or the whole year of, of you. I guess we, we just didn't used to watch them live, so I'm used to, like, you guys would talk about it and I would watch it a week later. Exactly. Uh, it'd pop up and it'd be an event. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean... Lame. It it has yeah I I don't know like I think they've gotten bigger than they've ever been by doing it the way they're currently doing it but I do understand like the frustration of like not being able to just go see the shit but yeah now there's, they can there, keep more money there's not really a lane money. for casuals like you kind of got to be in no. it mm-hmm. at this point yeah yeah you have to catch it live and that's probably the casual lane right now that's it yeah yep and and like I'm not setting aside because it'd be like yeah Saturday at five two o'clock like, yeah or two, two o'clock, o'clock. Y'all, yeah. yeah. What did we, me and Blake just watch, or yeah, when we were watching the fucking whatever one, I was going to the wedding, and it's like, oh, I can't wait to watch it, but it's a Saturday at 2 p.m. Sick. Uh-huh. It's one of the few things still geared like towards the East Coast. <laughs> Most everything hey. is the opposite. Yeah, man. They, I, damn, yeah. I feel like they, yeah, you see, like, they would drop like a summer madness. What, what summer madness uh, happened in June? You'll see, like, the third, fourth battle coming out on like Christmas on YouTube and shit. Like, God, that's damn, what, man. yeah. Never... Smack used to be, uh, used to be Smack Christmas. Like, he used to drop some shit on Christmas or New Year's. Yeah. Like, man. Like, I got what y'all to... been waiting for, Shun. <laughs> we got this battle for you, Shun. Like, nigga, I've been wanting to know who won this battle for like five months. You just now putting this shit on YouTube? Like, God damn. And, and it used to be back then on, on Twitter, like, you'd hear people, like, people would be saying who won and who lost and shit like that. And, like, you obviously hadn't seen the battle yet, but, like, there were people who were there, and like someone was like, "No, my man's had it on his phone. I watched it off of there, or whatever." And be like, "Oh mm-hmm. my god, I can't wait till this shit comes out." You talking crazy right now? <laughs> no, nigga, nigga, gotta wait five months and two days to see uh, that shit. Just to be like, I fucking told you, you watched it. Yeah, or like you, you, you like look online and you find it, but it's like shitty quality, and then oh uh, my god. You don't know who's rapping. At least the good thing about today is that there's a lot of other leagues and talent battles mostly everywhere. Unless like you're strictly talking about like the um the the people who were probably popping on URL like ten years ago. 
those guys just tend to battle just in URL, but almost everybody else like battles everywhere else, and those ones still go on YouTube. So. What's those? Uh, what's the other league? Uh, so I don't get URL. King of what's the Dot, the... Riot, Gates of the Garden. What's that other one? The one that's uh, Queen of the you Ring, or, isn't that Queen of the Ring a thing? Oh, I remember you, Dub. I remember yeah, you, that's Dub. Cool. Was it wasn't King of the Dot? No, nah, I know that one. There's another one. The one I know uh Lord Jamar is like part owner of it. Him and um the other name. RBE. Um, there we go. RBE. Yeah. Do you believe? <laughs> <laughs> shout out, shout out. Um, I think his name is Adam from RBE, man. He's a cool guy. Is that the dude with the uh is that the dreads dude, or am I thinking of somebody else? Nah, nah, he just be the one standing right in the middle with the hat on all low in his glasses. Uh, but, uh, he has like a crazy ass fucking collection of pops. Like he's a nerd. Oh, that's hilarious. Nerd, nerd. Damn. Um, but I, there, either way, there's a battle rap event tomorrow though. So uh, there's another super fight tomorrow. The headline of that is Tay Rock versus Danny Myers, and they have been getting fucking spicy. So check that out. There'll be commentary coming from our account. I'm man. I used to think Tay Rock used to be one of. I'm I'm, I'm kind of not too big on Tay Rock lately. I don't know what it is. He's been on the bad end of some fucking perfect performances. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've weird. watched him that battle, and it's weird. like, damn, he he doing his thing, and then it's like, wow, somebody just cracked his fucking head open. Nothing he could do yeah. about that. He, he caught like the best daylight and the best moot performance, like probably the last ten years. <laughs> like, yeah. So. yeah. I do I think his best see performance is a rematch against Charlie Clips. I think that's his best performance ever. There's a dude on TikTok hmm. who who. Who uh what, superimposes battle rap Charlie shit Clips? onto GTA characters? It'd be GTA <laughs> San Andreas characters battle rapping, but like real niggas like lines over them. It's ridiculous. I love it, dude. We need to we need to play GTA that GTA shit that T Grizzly be doing, man. RP, Dog. Mm, that that hey, shit looks so fun. We need to readdress this VR shit. Honestly, hey, shoot, dog, because like. So like I, I said this earlier this week in the chat, but like, um, cause Jamal had asked a while ago about getting a VR headset cause, uh, just like what you need for it and shit like that. And like, in my mind, when he asked me that, I'm thinking strictly like triple A games and I knew like that shit is like intensive. Like you need like a serious computer for it. Um, I didn't know the other stuff that people were using VR for. Um, and then Everything. like you posted this week, I'm not going to say what the gentleman was doing, but either way, he basically <laughs> got a web browser up <laughs> inside an environment on his VR headset. But it was like a big ass like IMAX screen he's basically looking at. I was like, yo, that is like some of the coolest shit I've seen. Like, I completely get how people are getting these now because it's like that's a cool ass way to just do normal shit that you already do. Like, yeah, yeah, and it's like, because hey. I think what PlayStation VR was like three hundred. Like, I could you could justify like maybe playing three hundred for some of that shit. But PlayStation yeah. VR, you it's tethered to your system, and you got to kind of do PlayStation shit. If you get like an Oculus Quest, you, I think you can exactly. just go onto the internet. Like, I think it's what that dude was doing, right? Yeah, that's what you can just what he probably yeah, had. You can just get on the internet. Like, you don't got to do all that. With the PlayStation VR, you're playing your PlayStation in VR and playing PlayStation. Yeah. yeah. You talk about the nigga that was talking about the uh, the, the, hey, the, the, hey, the, the Britney Whatever Spears shit, right? He, 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 you know. he, he explicitly <laughs> yeah. said, I'm not going to say what the gentleman Yeah, that nigga said, yo, we got some... I think I said we got some dark arts on here. <laughs> We're losing recipes. Good yeah, God. man. Well, like I'm saying, if you're just gonna be like laying on your bed looking at your iPad, looking at your phone or whatever, like that's a way cooler way to do it. Like, I don't know, you watching some show on Netflix just zoning out, like it's a way cooler way to do it. That will like, be hard. Just put your headset it's on. Funny just watch thing it. to do it on your bed because you can't really, <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell nobody what you're doing in there. So it's like somebody come in, you just. Laying on your bed, stagnant with a fucking headset on. It's like, were you watching porn? No. All right. Do you trust your it roommates? Look, you gotta lock like your door. Yeah, do you? Tr- <laughs> you you in there with your VR headset and your headphones on, just getting fucking harassed. <laughs> oh my god. Because if Damn, like, let's know. say Jamal's in his room doing that, and I walk in, and I start recording him. No one's gonna know that what he's watching. I can just be like, yo, this freaky ass nigga in here doing. Blah, blah, blah. No, I'm true. trying to find the shit that I saved related to VR. Nah, yeah. Yeah, I want to see. I want to see what that when they they'll probably announce more stuff for the PSVR too. But I want to get. I'm getting VR this year. The PSVR two sounds like it's gonna be fire, but like. it's 
it's still tethered to your system, which kind of takes some of the appeal away from me. Because I want to be able to kind of just lost you to that gaming part of it. That's that's basically yeah. It. I want and like do that I have shit. to literally plug it in, so it's like I can't like ha- my PlayStation's in the game room, so it's like oh I got people over. I want to like people want to fuck around in the VR and bring it to the living room, but I got to bring my whole PlayStation out. We can only do so much on there. Like, kind of takes away some of the fun. With the Oculus Quest, motherfuckers just like my mom came over. I had her boxing somebody randomly. That's hard. And those videos be so fucking funny when people be like running into the wall or like boxing people. Somebody tap them on their shoulder so they just fall over. They have people knocked like out the kid. Uh, <laughs> they had they had one where like somebody's mom was like walking a plank and she's like I'm gonna fall I'm gonna and just literally falls over in the middle of the living room which is hilarious. But look, okay, so this is what I saved. There was like three stories that happened this week. One of them I don't have the screenshot for, but um, one this lady like uh, I think she filed for like sexual harassment that happened to her in the metaverse. What she, said she was sexually harassed? Yeah, she said somebody like groped her ass in the metaverse. Um. Which is did she feel it in that real made life? me think of a huh? No, no, she, no, but like honest, like, yeah, is that gonna be a thing? Like, not have you people, ever been on the internet? Can you get right? No, 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 I'm not saying that, but I'm saying like litigation and like laws and stuff about like how you conduct yourself in, in a virtual environment with other people. Okay, have, have you seen Ready Player One? Yes, it's gonna be a thing. Because at some point they're gonna make it to where you can feel shit, you can like be actually like feeling like this is you. Somebody's gonna do some freaky shit because we're freaky, <laughs> and absolutely, absolutely gonna be a thing. I don't oh, know if it will be this year or next year or the next, but it will be eventually. That's wild as fuck! Like you bumped your pixels into my pixels, I'm gonna sue you. <laughs> um, I don't know. And the other thing, um, so what is this? Um. Everybody Damn. just gets Some... banned from the metaverse. <laughs> so a game that's going to be like a, a metaverse game, like they sold $55 million worth of virtual land in one week already. It's called Legacy. It's supposed to come out for PC this year. What the fuck? Nigga, what do you mean? They I know. sold virtual You got to pay like real life money for this land? They pay in Ethereum. But um, so Snoop Dogg uh, is in on this too. I don't know if it's on this game. He's talking about it on the year and wrap up thing. But basically, if you think about just literally think about PlayStation Home, right? Imagine like you could have a permanent amount of space in PlayStation Home that's just like your thing to do whatever you want with. Like you can be a storefront, it can be like something advertising for your business, it could be like a space where like you do creative shit. But it's just it's always there. Like and people have to walk by. There's there's a finite amount of space in this place because it's like we're only gonna render so much. So it's like yeah. you now own this. You're in a good spot. If you like buy something next to Snoop's plot of land, a lot of people are going to see because they're going to come see Snoop's thing. So it's like, I don't know. It, it's like you're you're buying like a, a front page ad on Google almost sort of. Is that you have to think mm, about it? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not buying then, no virtual land, bro. You're going to be sick. Like, damn, why didn't I buy that virtual land? <laughs> I'm about to say, yeah, you might eventually. Don't say you won't because you might eventually be because that might be the wave. Yeah. It's like, hey man, I just got a plot of virtual land, bro. My, yeah, my, my, my dad sent me something. <laughs> the stock market, like two dollars away from crashing today, you might be having to buy virtual land because you can't get no other land. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. And this is the last one I, I screenshotted. Uh, Jackson, Tennessee, will become the first U.S. city to allow its employees to choose Bitcoin as a payment conversion option. That's Tonio's hometown. So shout out oh, to Tony, him. I know oh, Tony about to go back home. He about to be selling power back home. Money man about to be over there going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all the sort of virtual meta shit that I have saved. But it, oh goddamn, that was a when that shit starts to kick off. People about to be in there wilding. Yo, I so, think so. I think like you look at like a GTA. Lobby, I want to be a part of it. I want to see. I don't want to be closest shit partaking in it, but I want to watch and listen. I feel like there's gonna be choices though. Like I, I really think like PlayStation Home is like. The, the beta version of what the hell we're about to see. Yeah. PlayStation it's just weird. Of and I, I don't like that yeah. Facebook's trying to be the home of all of it. I That don't sit right with me. If it was somebody else, maybe. But Facebook's so grimy that it's like, I don't, I don't want y'all controlling the metaverse. Leave it they're alone. all doing the same thing. Like, it's, I don't know. What do you mean they're all doing the same thing? As far as like data aggregation and stuff like that, like what place, like what Facebook is big on, like with their ads and shit like that, and how much they know about everything, 
Google's the same way. Um, literally anybody who's in the tech space is oh, the yeah. same no, way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I know all that. Shit. Facebook is the least trustworthy trustworthy to me of all of those. Regardless. How so? I know because they're nasty, just in general. Mark Zuckerberg, nasty. They be moving nasty. Uh, they like to they're spread all it. Gross. I, they're all gross. And fa- gro- somebody got to be the grossest, right? If everybody grows, somebody got to be the grossest. I don't know. All right. Touche. Uh, Blake, big Facebook. I'm putting that in my notes right now. I don't even have, I haven't, I've had, I probably got rid of my Facebook before both of you guys did. Probably. Yeah, or, happen, anyway, man. move on. Next topic, finding a <laughs> slant. R.I.P. John Madden, man, the dude that changed sports video games forever for wow. us. Basically, like, yeah, sports video games would be fucking trash without John Madden. For um, sure. Hey, go to the game. Sports broadcasting game. would be different without him from everything I've been learning since he passed away because I did not know he was yep. getting down like he was getting down. Yeah, I don't even see, I don't remember shit about him calling sports. Um, I know he did it though. No, I'm not saying I didn't know that, but yeah. I'm just saying like I have no, no I think, memories of my football memories. I think they him. said he called his last game. It was either 2006 or 2008. So it was like, you know, you were 10, 11 years old, not yeah. thinking about who's calling a game. But most wins in Raiders head coach history. Youngest coach to win a Super Bowl. Youngest coach to 100 wins. Became head coach Damn. at 32. Double digit wins in six of his 10 seasons. No seasons under 500. His worst season is nine and seven. Responsible for popularizing. Popularizing the pop, you were realizing the telestrator, like the little yellow line shit you draw on the on the TV. Won twelve Emmy awards as a broadcaster and called eleven Super Bowls. God that damn, was, eleven Super Bowls. Was, That's yeah, hell. yeah, the namesake and yeah, a big part of the probably. Well, it's not the biggest sports franchise anymore. It's one of the top three though, probably. I think FIFA and Two K are up there with it. And I think it probably would be the biggest as far as, like, its longevity. Like, FIFA ain't been around as long as Madden's been around. No, yeah. Yeah. But, <clears throat> yeah, I know that, uh, first off, I did not know he was the youngest coach to win a Super Bowl, and I did not know he became a coach at 32 because I feel like every picture I've seen of him, he has gray hair and looks old as hell. Yeah, so I didn't know that either. To be. Everything else makes perfect sense, though. Like, he, from all accounts, he was an incredible coach, barely fucking lost anything. Um, and yeah, just hearing all the like sports people talk this week about his job on the Telecaster and like the sh- like he was looking at it as a coach. He was telling people like, I don't want to call this team's game because I haven't watched them practice or I haven't watched their film. Like that's the big was, part. Yeah, he changed that shit. Yeah, he was really like, oh no, I'm not just like some nigga getting on TV. I'm going to break down their film and then say like, yeah. hey, I know that like they're doing this because we talked to blank 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 and. Yeah, it, it's incredible, and it, it really has shaped shit what we do. Like, we wouldn't be talking about sports the way we do if we didn't kind of, like, grow up hearing people on TV talk about kind of, yeah, like, kind of sort of breaking down X and his O's, and it don't sound like nobody really did it the way he did it. So, yeah, he really changed yeah, it. Yeah, I think the, the, that's one of the, the – you were just hitting on the one of the things I heard of uh, these past couple of weeks is that like, he – would have the the television team would be like at whatever game they're going to do for like the whole entire week leading up to it, like just in the practices with the, with the team and stuff like mm-hmm. that and in the meetings. So they really got to grasp what was going on. Um, so and that was because of him. Yeah. Niggas I think just that's how every week. Man. Yeah. RIP. Hopefully the next man is the best man ever. No. You know, they've been have like a Superman edition, $300. You get John Madden. Madden that he would fucking hate. No, you, no, there's going to be some Madden NFTs. Uh, I did Ultimate see um, they they said not obviously not the the very last thing he did, but I guess he had they had the you know the all Madden documentary came out on Christmas, so he had his family over, all of his family and friends over, and they watched his documentary. Um, mm. You know, he got to hear how people thought about it, what they thought about him, obviously, um, kind of see his life encapsulated, and then he passed away a couple of days later. So that's really a a tight way to like end your life, you know, like you're old. So it's like, you know, you're going to be going soon and to have your like people around you while you're being celebrated in front of everybody and everybody's hearing about you, talking about you. That's a likely way to go out. Recapping your career. Absolutely. That's tight. RIP a legend, man. Absolutely. Unless, uh, unless that man vision cone thing was his idea and that was racist. (laughs) They said the last Madden he was actually involved with was Madden 05. Like what? he sold whatever he had into it and got paid out yeah. after that. He would consult and yeah. like he would do commercials every once in a while, but like he didn't have anything to do with after that. And if you think Games like I think after like 
get, <laughs> gave us a truck stick and got out of there. And I think if you think, like, I think after 07 or 08, year for Madden, Madden changed to coach suggestions. So, like, they kind of got rid of that part. <gasps> 05 was a killer year for Madden. All right. <laughs> um, I guess up until a couple of years ago, he was still doing like uh, these, these, not like a morning show on Bay Area Radio, but like he had a segment where like they would yep. call him and like he would just like talk about shit. So yeah. It's kind of cool. Still involved, still getting out there, still on the brain work. Um, speaking of brain working, <laughs> to oh, the next fuck. subject. Oh my God. A B Antonio Brown, uh, maybe the greatest Steelers wide receiver of the past decade plus. Maybe <laughs> he's better he than is, right? it ain't he's no, better yeah, than it ain't no one. Yeah, it's easily he he's yeah. he's in the conversation of one of the best receivers of all time, let alone of the last decade. So yeah, for my sure. bad. Yeah, put some respect on him. Um, yeah. What a wild ending to. Um, and even no, not not necessarily a wild career. Wild isn't good, no. probably, but like a tumultuous a, like last four years, probably. It, I don't think it was wild up until really shit started spiraling I, here. Yeah, that ha- I think that says a lot about Pittsburgh. Either he didn't of ever act out. Down. Yeah, because they they were pulling up stuff. You know, like he did this in college. He did this like his first year in the league. So for them to like keep all of this shit under wraps, and then the second he left there, it was like. Oh, he's the craziest football player I've ever seen. Um, I feel like that says a lot about Pittsburgh to keep a lot of that shit under wraps. Mike Tomlin, the goat. I agree. Yeah, I have a list yeah. that's probably like two pages long of everything that he did. It's just single bullet points, but um, I, I've seen this list and I would like for you to read it. I would like for you to read it, please. The whole oh thing. My God. Oh, you just tell me when to stop. But hold on, let's uh, just talk about what happened this week, though, or at least first. So, um, AB in the game against the Jets, uh, Tampa Bay was down, what, probably like, were they down two possessions when this happened? Yeah, they were down two possessions I, I so. when this happened. Yeah. Okay. Um, so basically, all that you see at, at first is <laughs> AB like stripping his shit off and like throwing it, throwing uh, his undershirt and his glove into the crowd and like crossing across the end zone as the game's being played at the other end of the field and like walking to the locker room while pointing at the fans and shit like that. Um, and then they start piecing it back together with like footage from the sideline um, of him arguing with Mike Evans. And Mike Evans trying to get him to like to stop, like, yo, bro, like, what are you doing? Um, and then did they have one of Bruce Arians talking to him? A camera angle of that too, or no? People, I haven't seen one yet. And people are like, we're sure there's going to be one that comes out because, of course, there's a camera on them. I haven't seen it. Okay, yet. for sure. So ba- that's okay. That, so let's just put it there. That's, that's where like basically. It all stopped, though, was that we had Mike Evans talking to him, and then that's as far back as we got into what was going on. Um, so the next day, or not even the next day, that day, that day um, a rumor game. comes out of the the incentives part. People thought it was because of that, that they weren't letting him play because he was about to get some incentives. Uh, Tyrell brought up the, the great point. It's like, well, why would he get that mad when he could just play next week and get, <laughs> get the incentives? And y'all are down by two possessions. You're going to keep throwing the ball. I don't think that makes any sense. They're going to throw the ball. And they're, it they're, it. Him and Mike Evans were the only receivers playing. Like, Godwin yeah. was out. Tyron Johnson's been cut. Um, yeah, Cyril Grayson. Ty- that's about it. Yeah, Cyril Grayson. Like, what are you talking about? He was going to keep getting the ball. I don't. He needed 55 yards and eight receptions. Like, yep. he was going to okay. get that on then, accident. Did A.B. post his ankle that same day? Or was it the next no, day? that was that was two days ago. I think oh, that was so Wednesday or Tuesday of this week. Yeah, that just happened. Yeah. Okay, so then now, now it. I mean, yeah, AB got cut yesterday. Yes, but basically, what yes. he's saying is that his ankle was hurt to the point where he couldn't like run on it. He's still saying that to the, to this day. Um, and he said like if you looked at him leave the field during that game, like you could see him like hobble off the field, like he couldn't go on his ankle. And Bruce Arians like wanted him to push through and like play on the on the ankle. And then when he wouldn't do it, he said, get the fuck off my team or get the fuck off. Um, get the fuck out of here or something like that. Yeah, get the yeah. fuck off my field, I think, or something like that to him. So AB, he's like, OK, well, if I'm not doing this, like, I'm not going to wear your shit anymore. That's like he took it off and like left and walked out of there. Um, I will say real quick, yeah. I was before he walked off the field, 
earlier in the mm-hmm. game, I was going to send a route that somebody posted that he ran and say, oh, my God, I was, I was going to talk about the fact that I think AB is one of the best receivers of all time if he hadn't fucked off three years of his career because he like put a nigga on his hip and then the Thank other you. hip and then the other hip and then stopped and the dude ran for like another seven yards. I was like, yo, this thing is hitch. so different. <laughs> so it's hard for me to be like, oh, your ankle hurt because you <laughs> you ran one of the best routes I've ever seen. Ever, yeah, like, I think, yeah, it was it was nasty. So I, I listened to him today on the um the full sim podcast, and like he's basically saying that his thing is right now he can't run full speed. Um, that doesn't okay. stop him from doing things like you said, like with the plant. Okay. It probably definitely hurt hella bad. Yeah, and he said for sure. He said it's a deltoid injury. Um, it just it just hurts really really bad. Um, so he yeah he ran that route. He 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 busted that dude the fuck up. Um, <laughs> and, that shit was embarrassing got cut off the team so i think i don't think anyone's going to touch him now because like his last two jobs have been solely because of tom brady um yeah that's probably much. it right yeah. yeah he might i don't know I, somebody will take a flyer out on him i don't He's still hella good but i damn. i thought that somebody would take a flyer on him but the like i think before this point all of his There's, shit was like either practice stuff or like off the field stuff but you throwing your shit on the field and running off the field like it's a bad look during a game i can't imagine anybody wanting to touch that after this he's incredible like i think he could probably play for a couple more years and be productive Mm -hmm. but you kind of just have to think like if i say or do the wrong thing to this person is he gonna just like be gone or is he gonna want out or is he gonna like cause something or piss people off or record the locker room or and it's it's kind of it doesn't seem fair necessarily to like put all of his past actions onto this one, but like it's hard to give him the benefit There's a of the pattern, though. and he's had four straight years of doing wild shit that led up to yeah. this. And you, um, what was it? Uh, he said today on the Full Sin podcast that like he absolutely would go play for another contender, like someone who's trying to get a championship, but he said like flat out like I can't run right now, so there's no point for me doing that. Like I'm not, I'm not 100%. Yeah. So and what contender would bring you in week 18? Like that, oh, they just they just were asking him if he would if he would do oh, it if he would okay. yeah. still keep playing. He's like, yeah, absolutely. I'm a football player. I I would go play for another contender right now, but I can't. Yeah. Um, um, and then he got caught for sneaking in a young lady into his hotel, breaking COVID. Oh, the chick that was like licking up. toilets and shit. She made the yeah, she wasn't licking toilets there, but like licking toilets in 2020. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't licking toilets there. She was just licking toilets somewhere else. Uh, yeah, now so it's, it's, it's 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 tough yeah. to give him before you read this list because it's long and funny, but like it's hard to give someone the benefit of the doubt when they have a list this long. Like he might be telling the truth yeah. that like Bruce Arians would be like, "I'm hurt, I can't play." He did he released the text message of him saying like, "Hey, coach, like I'm hurt, like I, I'm gonna show up to practice tomorrow. Don't know if I can play." Bruce Arians was like, "Yeah, come to my office and talk to me. We'll figure it out." So. Bruce Arians after the game saying, oh, I didn't know that he was hurt. Like, I don't think he was hurt or whatever he said. Like, probably not the truth, but it's hard to give someone the benefit of the doubt when they fuck up so frequently. Like, yeah, I don't know. people can say whatever they kind of want about you at this point, And like your words, not really going to matter. So I got to kind of believe them. Yeah. Per- so what perception you becomes reality after a while, man. Mm. Yeah, dude, you give enough people enough shit like as you'll see on this like you kind of lose the benefit of the doubt like you were saying earlier yeah um, so some of the stuff on here um it just it just it's just words and quotes it doesn't give the context to it but this is from uh roadhog main ow on reddit he made this list on the nfl subreddit um people keep adding things to it and stuff and like whatnot but here we go so he's kicked out of uh, FIU after fighting security guard. The next one says, don't touch me. I'm the franchise. Uh, his second year in the league, he took a personal stretch limo to a charity event, had them open every single expensive bottle of wine, rejected it, refused to pay for it, then left. Um, threw fits wow. over not getting enough targets. This is in Pittsburgh. Drove 100 down McKnight Road in Pittsburgh, which has a 45 mile an hour speed limit. Trashed a condo and threw furniture out a window of a 14th floor window, which almost hit some people, notably a child. Killed a home aquarium full of piranhas and refused to pay the man who installed the tank. Refused to play week 17 for the Steelers. Dyed his mustache blonde, which is probably the worst thing on this list. Uh, refused to pay a chef because he thought he threatened him by pla- placing a fish head in the freezer. The fish head was saved to make a soup. 
farted on a doctor, demanded a trade from the Steelers, became Mr. Big Chest, threw a fit over a juju, winning team MVP, and trashed him on social media. <laughs> Nixed the trade that would have sent him to the Bills, showed up to Raiders training camp in a hot air balloon, held out and refused to show up to training camp because the NFL died. <laughs> because it was too old for their safety standards. <laughs> Froze his feet. Tried to paint over his old helmet, hoping no one would notice, I guess. Acquired a newer version of the same model of helmet, which the NFL refused to let him use. Picked out a new helmet and finally showed up to the Raiders. Got fined by the Raiders for not attending camp. I forgot about this whole entire helmet shit. That was wild. Bro, I forgot. Three what? I forgot. <laughs> for, that he had somebody steal, if I'm not mistaken, somebody had to go like into the facility and take the helmet because the steel was like, no, you're not taking this. Somebody had to go take yeah. the helmet and then paint the shit. Yeah. Okay. Tried to fight Mike Mike Mayock, called him a cracker, had to be held back by Vontez Perfect, <laughs> then punted a football down the practice field and said, Find me for that. <laughs> Got fined for that. <laughs> 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 Released a video where he used audio of John Gruden, who didn't know he was being recorded, which is illegal in California. Um, demanded a release from the Raiders, was released. This one's a quote. It says, Grandma, I'm free. Fly like a free. I don't know what that is. He yelled um, at, yelled, running. He, he, no, he watched the video, or sorry, he gets a text shit. on his yeah, phone yeah. and has somebody in his house with like an 8K video recording him. He reads the text message, goes, Grandma, I'm free, and sprints out of the back door of his <laughs> house, like runs across the lawn. I, I don't think he jumped in the pool, but he like runs past the pool. He's like, Grandma, I'm free, yelling at the sky, like <laughs> crazy. All right. Um, like tweet about Mike Mayock getting raped in the ass. Oh my um, god. I did not <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Moved him with Tom Brady. Uh sexual assault allegations, sexual harassment allegations, threatened the woman not suing him in a group text that included his lawyer and had a picture of her kids in the text. Oh, got released by the Patriots after one week. Went off on a tweet storm and said a lot of crazy shit about a lot of people and was supportive of people sending threats to the writer of an article detailing the sexual harassment allegations. Um, uh, this isn't bad. He went back to college via online classes, said he was on the NFL, tried to outsource his homework to Twitter, wants to come back to the NFL. Uh, he tried to outsource his homework to Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? Some hilarious. of this stuff is like so beyond the pale. You know he's got to be a top five receiver of all time. Oh okay. yeah, I don't want to keep reading the rest of these, but like remember um, the no white women twenty twenty. I wanted to get to that one. That was nah, the yeah. no white woman twenty twenty. His baby mom and fiance is white. <laughs> he, this is a man recognizing his problems and trying to separate himself from them. Sam, so like I can't keep doing these. Wait, I'm sorry. Didn't he release the rap song "Pit to Palace" after he left the game? Like he released that Monday, right? Yeah, that's at the bottom of the list because I think that this is kind of it's it's lightly in chronological order. Yeah, it was a, that was Bro. very recent. No, AB has done that so song is ass much too. wild lying, shit. That song, and like yeah. I know I you watched the interview today where he like mentioned you know like people how people talk about Vincent Jackson who you know just drank himself. Did you see the actual that. part or was it just like no, from what I said? Just from what you said, I haven't. I was at work okay. all day, so I haven't. Can I feel you in on that? Like what? Like yes. what exactly what you meant? Yeah. Um. So. Basically, like, because they asked him about, like, hey, people say, like, everything changed for you after the Vontez Burford hit um, in that, like, you're suffering from, like, head trauma and stuff like that. And he was like, you know, it's like what's crazy about that is, like, um, there's, like, an actual player who used to play for the Bucks, Vincent Jackson. He had CTE, and he ended up basically dying over the CTE. Um, I think Vincent Jackson, like, overdosed in a hotel room or something like that, right? He drank yeah. himself to death. He literally died from, drank like, his, his kidneys and liver failing. Okay, they were saying like his CTE, like because he, I think his brain tested positive for it or whatever. Yes. after like, the autopsy, like stage like, two, like bad CTE. Yeah, it, the depression from it likely drove him to that place, is what they were saying. But they were like, um, th- "That's a player who used to play for the Bucks. Um, they didn't do shit for him after that, like in in during the time that he had it." But people want to talk about me, a guy who people are just having fun and like making light of, saying that I have CTE, and it's like you you can't even test for that shit when you're alive. Like no, nobody knows what I have and what I don't have. And it's like, you have people who actually have the shit that no one's taking serious. So it's like, just stop doing that. Basically. He was actually kind of making a good point about that. No, for sure. That's a, a, an incredible point. And I, I do think there is like, and I think that's 
where him doing so much shit stops being funny and it stops being funny and it starts being real. Uh, it's kind of like, alarming. No, it yeah, because like he's done so much shit where it's like, dog, like <laughs> a, a nigga showing up to training camp in a fucking hot air balloon after holding out to a team he's never played for and I don't think played a game for or played one game for. Like, that's concerning and it should be concerning. Hours. But like shit's so wild that it's like, you know, we see it. It's like, oh my God, you forget about the like, because you mentioned like five things on that list that like, oh, we forgot about this. We forgot about that. We forgot about this. So it's like, you look at the hot air balloon thing. It's like, ha ha ha. But you forgot that he's done 10 other things. You look at the frozen feet thing and it's like, ha ha ha. I forgot everything about a lot can't of that be ha shit. ha ha. Like something's got to be going on and it's, it's not funny. Some of the shit he is doing is funny, but like, and I don't know if there's help that he can get for whatever's going on, but like, so the shit's troubling um, for sure. This is like a, actually a, a quote from the show Yellowstone. Um, because one of the characters on there went through some traumatic shit when they were a kid, but they basically said, like, you would, when someone has something traumatic happen to them when they're a kid, like, like horribly traumatic like you stay that same age for like the rest of your life. And like AB yep. had like a terrible childhood, like where I think his, his family basically disowned him and like he was been homeless since like 15. Right. Um, So he's like always had like this crazy me first attitude. I think Ryan Clark was talking about this, that this week where um he can be like a little bit hard to, to deal with, but like ultimately like he means well, and he's an incredible hard worker. It's just that if you think of, someone who is a me first 15 year old and how they would handle like all the shit that comes to them in life. It's a B like, yeah. Yeah. Getting, I ran off the field, caught an Uber and I'm on the Uber driver's Snapchat. And then I release a rap song. Like that is very much a child. And it's again, it's troubling. Um, yeah. I don't know what the fuck anybody's supposed to do about it, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a lot of work <laughs> in, in a vacuum. Some of the shit is funny for sure. Like, some of the Absolutely. shit he does, does is funny. Some of it's like, why? Like him recording when Mike Tomlin's speaking, he's on Facebook Live. Like, that's a child doing shit like that. Like, you're acting childish. Uh, that is, yeah. No, that's 100% what that is. Yeah. And like, like it, coaching here tripping again. It, if if this wasn't, a, and I, I will keep saying this because I think he might be, if this wasn't a top five all time receiver doing this and this was, yeah. Uh, Richie Incognito, who you forget about every once in a while, doing weird shit like this, like you kind of just leave it alone, right? But like, it's just somebody who's so good that they keep getting jobs and they keep doing all this. So I don't want to like super shit on him, but like, he don't ever like feel bad. He don't ever like apologize for the shit he be doing. He just like moves on from it. So it's hard to feel bad for him. But I think something much larger than just a dickhead One hit is going on here. Perfect. Like, yeah, man, we no, know what is it is, man. Game. He and, first athlete to sign the Young Jeezy label, man. Niggas know what it is. All right, did he? <laughs> no, CTE dog. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal, been, Jamal ain't said Whoa. shit. He been he been working on that for eight minutes. You got to move your mic closer to you, man. Because when you talk, like you can get hella drowned out. Be missing your funnies. Oh my god! Oh my god! He is the worst. Yeah, but yeah, no, you got to be fucking nice to have a list of this type of shit and uh, like, still be in the league. Nah, yeah, he's ridiculous, but yeah, hopefully he gets the help that he needs. And uh, I'd still like to see him play football because he was fucking nice. Like he was clearly yes, he like was. the best receiver. It was like him then fantasy like, games this year, Julio, and guys like that. But he was clearly Julio like, doesn't score one. touchdowns though. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like he Julio's would get the touchdowns, the catches, and the yards. Julio, so. Oh, Julio been watched. Yeah, Julio's Julio watched like some, watched. some good detergent right now. AJ uh, Green better than Julio. Uh, AJ Green fucking disappeared the last three years. It's funny Shit, because four. when so mixtape started talking about AB being like one of the best receivers of all time, and I started looking at his numbers. I'm like, God damn, like they got a point. And they started shitting on Julio, and I was a huge Julio fan. I still fuck with him. Like his game is ridiculous. He's a great player, he's a physical specimen. You look at his numbers, it's like I think Blake, you posted him. He's like top twenty uh, all time. He just don't score. Yards. That's it. That it's motherfucker weird. got the half of the amount of touchdowns as like anybody else around him. It's incredible. Yeah. He just doesn't score, but all the other numbers, I mean, they be. He, Matt he'll Ryan, one hundred eleven catches at seventeen hundred. Hey, you know, Matt Ryan is like the. I think 
the only quarterback in the history of the Falcons with back-to-back winning seasons? That sounds right. Damn, Vic, I, I watched that. Uh, I watched that nope. secret basis on the Falcons, and that sounds correct. Yeah, he's like their. He's by far their best quarterback of all time in the history. Yeah, of yeah I knew that. Shit. I'm just surprised Michael Vick never had a uh, back-to-back winning seasons with them. Nah, because he played what six seasons there, really? Like at his peak. And <laughs> yeah, they but were I feel like, like they went to the playoffs a couple times though. You can go to the playoffs without a running record, especially in the NFC South. Oh, can you? Yeah, don't mind me of that. In well, the NFC South. Playoffs? Nigga, the Bucks were winning like two games a year. The Saints were Saints walked to a seven and nine Seahawks team in the playoffs. Yeah, and Vic was Fuck, gone by I, them. Yeah, I guess you. The, yeah, I guess you can yeah. go to the playoffs with a losing record. The Panthers okay, weren't good. Remember. Yeah, like the the Falcons could. I, without looking, I could tell you the Falcons probably had an eight and eight record, and went to the playoffs and, so, and probably you won that division for the longest thing in the NFC South. Nobody won the division back to back years. So yeah, team being mm, yeah. two years in a row is. Uh, Farfetched. Mm, okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense when you, when you put it like that. They yeah. still kind of do that shit. Like, it's different a little bit, but like, it'll be the Saints will be second, fourth, mm-hmm. second, first, fourth, second. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's over with now because, I mean, it's, it's going to be the Bucks until Tom says, I don't want to play anymore. All right. I'll see you in 2037. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that motherfucker is nice. All right. Um, Tom Brady. And then the Panthers are. Potentially going to trade Christian McCaffrey, so also to do the. Are they really talking oh, about trading? Oh shit! Him? Wait a minute. Open offers. Open offers. <laughs> it's just like, what would you Dang. give up to get him? Because it's like he's his body's falling apart. You know they're going to ask for some bullshit too. They're going to ask for some shit. We yeah, want I two mean, first. If, if I'm the Eagles. You know. Ooh. Yeah. Or if I'm if I'm the Jets and I have a bunch of draft capital and I want to help out my young quarterback by giving him something to dump the ball off to. I think he I think it's a, so he easy to find a good though. running back that you. I don't I think I'd give up a first for him. Yeah, I'd pay well, him. I'm not giving up a first. And even then, like if it, it the the guaranteed money, um, doesn't move with him, the the Panthers keep paying that. So whatever that split is, like his contract isn't as big as you think on a trade. It don't even matter. I don't know why we're talking about. It. He's going to be on the fucking Rams or somehow. Yeah, and they'll they'll make it work. <laughs> no. And I, yeah. he won't get hurt again. He'll never be hurt again. <laughs> or he'll he'll go to the Patriots and like catch 115 balls oh, somehow and still run for 1,200. And the way Mac Jones plays, oh my fucking god! Yeah. First player with 212 receptions in a season or some dumb shit like that. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh well. Welcome our new uh, AFC North Overlords. All right, football <laughs> shit. There's Let's get it. Um. So I got the games broken down. I got a couple talking points for them, um, kind of in order and how they'll be played this upcoming week. Um, and I got the odds because me and Jamal are full blown degenerates at this point. Um, yes, sir. Way too much time at the casino. We're losing money left and right. It's incredible. Uh, so Saturday, so week eighteen. This is the first week eighteen in NFL history. First off, um, oh shit! And I don't particularly I hate thing. it. Because I think the ex- – first off, I will say I hate the fact – the extra game that teams had to play this year, the Chargers played the Texans, and we fucking lost. I don't like that. It's fucked up. I, why, why couldn't we have played the Jags? We would have beat them. Um, <laughs> but this is the first week 18. Uh, all, all the games, for the most part uh, – yeah, all the games are division games. So I'm excited to see how these shake out. Saturday, we got two games. Got Kansas City going to Denver to play the Broncos. Kansas City are 10 point favorites. Um, I think Kansas City will probably win by more than 10. Denver kind of looks dead in the water. But from what y'all have seen this year, do y'all think Kansas City has a legit shot to win the Super Bowl? Like, they're. No. Okay. Really? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't even Kansas really know how to frame it. I can't see them winning the Super Bowl this year. I like the Patriots more than them right now. Right now. Okay. Okay. In a, in a okay. one game playoff with how the Bengals look right now, if they played like next week, you got the Bengals. Give me Joe Burrow, man. Give me Skyline Chili. And if Derrick Henry comes back, and if if things shake right, the Titans will have a bye that Derrick Henry doesn't oh have God. to play, and he'll come back for the next game. Yeah, I feel well, I feel is. the same way. I just know I'm obviously biased because they're in our division. I just couldn't see them winning at all this year. Um, but I do think they'll beat the shit out of the Broncos this week because they're playing for the first seed possibly. 
Now, with that with that being said, though, there are definitely weeks, weeks, stretches of weeks where I felt that they were the team. And I don't know if maybe it's just like recency bias and like my eyes falling in love with like other shit that I'm seeing. Um, but that's that's the only reason I feel that way, because I could like I'm, I'm ready to walk back on that that statement at any moment, um, probably after this weekend. So that's me. Are you saying time. you're saying recency bias is saying no for you? Yes, of them not being a team yeah. to win it. OK. And I don't, I don't they probably them. haven't been playing bad. I've been seeing other teams is why. Yeah, and their defense has been so bad. Like, they gave up, what, 40 to the Bengals this week? Like, their defense has been good enough, but, like, we don't oh, associate shit, man, Kansas City with yeah, And got – and let Jamar Chase drop dick and <laughs> balls all over. Jamar Chase's first touchdown might be one of the best wide receiver touchdowns I've ever seen. He caught a fucking uh, eight-yard slant – Made two people miss and braced everybody to the fucking end zone. That's Absolutely incredible. Bullshit. I think he, he went. A, he went 66 yards and 155 yards after the catch. That's insane. Bro, he, he 11 it. catches, three touchdowns. And like none of the catches that he made were like, oh, yeah, we, we hit Jamar Chase wide open. And that was his thing at the beginning of the year where people were kind of like, okay, he got these deep balls and he can only catch the deep ball like he's faster than everybody. The catches he was getting against them, he, he, stiff arming niggas and catching it with the other hand and like spinning out of bounds like yeah he, hey and if uh lsu is wide receiver you and dbu anyway uh y'all think vic fangio gets brought back next year i know you guys don't watch a ton of broncos shit but do you think a coach that his two seasons there has just been like but like he's back yeah so. i don't see why you would fire him like what do you really expect him to do with like he hasn't really had a quarterback? And I feel like their defenses look solid at times when they have like kind of healthy and like he's a defensive guy. Their defense is like really the, good all year. Yeah, yeah, I feel like the organization doesn't trust Drew Locke, so he's not going to get blamed for anything that happens when he's in the game, and he's been out quite so. a bit lately. So, I, yeah, I yeah, I think nah, he's a I don't. Good coach. And then it's like if you do fire a guy, like what are you going to replace him with? That's the thing, you know. Grass is always greener. Mm-hmm. Every. Yeah. Especially with John Elway. John Elway is the king of grass. Fuck it up, greener. too, though. Who was their last <laughs> head coach? Who was their coach before? Uh, yeah. They, 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 they fired. Nah, they fired. Um, What's my man? Black dude. Uh, Vance Joseph. Oh, they fired him after yeah. A year. Vance Joseph. Yeah. Vance Joseph had a job out there? He, yeah. For one year. Mm. Did yeah, he I only get one? Like four games. Yep. He got one year. Because we. I think. Uh, the. The AFC because you guys, yeah, because you guys had wait there was there was two black coaches yeah. in the AFC West and there was like nine black coaches in the league and two of them got fired after their first year. Yeah, um, I'm interested to see what happens with that job though because I don't know if they're obviously going to need to bring in a new quarterback. I don't know if Vic Fangio is the guy to bring. Vic Fangio seems like he would be an awesome defensive coordinator. Only I don't know if he should be a head coach. I don't know if there's even a way to demote a guy from head coach to DC. Because his defenses are always incredible. I just don't know if he is a good head coach or not. He might just Vance Joseph got two years, by the way. Did he really? Yep. Uh, he went 5 got... 11 and 6. Oh, and was... uh, the Cardinals. Ha- Did the Cardinals have a black coach that got fired after a year? I know yeah, they had like, yep, black coach yep. season. That's Who was the Cardinals the, coach that year? The Cardinals had a co- black coach that got fired after one year. I just can't think of his name. It wasn't Todd Fuck, Bulls, right? I thought it was. No, it wasn't Tom. No, Todd Bowles was the Jets. Yeah. That was Fuck. the first back to the seasons for the Broncos since 71, 72. God damn. Yeah, the Broncos are always like just good. Even this year, like, what are they, seven and and ten now or whatever? Like or gonna be after yeah. this week? Yeah, the Broncos are always good. All right. Uh the second Saturday game we got, Dallas is going to Philly to play the Eagles. Dallas is a seven point favorite as of me writing this all down earlier. I know Trevon Diggs is not playing now. Um, a couple other players that they have are out. I don't think Parsons is playing either. He got Parsons COVID? is not playing. Yeah. Oh. Or, Trevon Diggs has illness. Not COVID, but illness. So I don't know if he has COVID or not. But they didn't put him on the COVID list. They just said he's sick. And I know Michael Parsons has COVID or is on the COVID list. Um, oh, But sheesh. so... <laughs> I'm so it's been interesting all year. You know, people have talked about Trevon Diggs winning defensive player of the year. Diggs Island is a thing. Uh, Trevon Diggs has given up 900 yards in coverage. Uh, to be exact, he's given up 907 yards in coverage. Do you think it's worth having a trade off like a guy with a guy like that where he's given up hella yards and or touchdowns? 
but he's giving you 11 because he had 11 picks. So he's giving you 11 extra possessions in the season. So in an 18-game season, 17-game season, he's giving you an extra possession every single game. Would you think no. that's worth him getting cooked as much as he does? No. No, no, no. So no for Blake. That's a lot. I okay, so then I compare. So I compared him to J.C. Jackson, who I believe is second in the league, played for the Patriots. Um, so I got their both their stats pulled up. So J.C. Jackson has eight interceptions. He has a 49% completion percentage against him on 102 targets. He's given up 12.8 yards per catch, 642 yards total. Uh, he's given up two touchdowns. Don't really hear him talked about the way you hear Trevon Diggs talked about. But Diggs, on the other hand, 11 touchdowns or 11 interceptions total, uh, given a 52% completion percentage on 103 targets. So one more target, similar p- completion percentage, giving up 16.8 yards per catch, 907 yards and four touchdowns. So two more touchdowns, but he's given up four more yards of catch, which one more catch a game, and that's uh, you know first down. Um, I think it's a pretty clear, like, J.C. Jackson would probably be who I would go with. But JC Jackson's about to get paid this offseason. Got to. Yeah. <laughs> and he had eight picks this year and nine picks last year. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, yeah, Trevon Diggs had 11 picks this year and three last year. The um, and, four, it was the, yeah, the four highest graded uh, DBs and man coverage this year for PFF are AJ Terrell, JC Jackson, Patrick Sershane, the second, and Marshawn Lattimore. And they, two of those uh, guys are rookies, can, right? God damn. Yep, they lead the NFL in coverage grade against uh, cover one among quarterbacks with 100 plus such snaps. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's been super interesting for me to see how Diggs has been talked about. And again, 11 picks in the season is incredible, but to give up that many yards, four touchdowns isn't bad. And kind of like with drops, I don't really know how they count you giving up a touchdown. I'm sure he's given up more than four touchdowns, but it's like, are you a man? Are you in zone? Whatever. Um, but yeah, like that's given up a 16 yards of catch is a lot, almost 17 yards of catch. No, it's, yeah. it's a shit ton. That's, hella that's a lot. Of, yeah. I would love um, to have a receiver on my team that's averaging 17 yards of catch. Like I was saying, like, uh, just told y'all earlier in the chat, like PFF did like this really like long and in-depth breakdown on, um, just his performance this year and stuff like that. And basically, like, Diggs, it, like, he's, you know, like, he's a conferred wide receiver, but like, he doesn't have, like, really any of the skills to play DB at this level. And you got to think about it, like, if a quarterback, like, threw, like, 40 touchdowns but had 30 picks, that quarterback wouldn't keep his job. And that's equivalent to what he's doing right now. Yeah, um, absolutely. He's, like, which is he, funny. He's, he's the most friendly person to throw the ball towards as if you're a quarterback right now. Yeah. You just might throw a pick if it's – the sixty percent of the times you don't complete a pass on him, or four, yeah. sorry, forty percent of the time you don't complete a pass on him. Less than like nobody, now. nobody might probably. Well, yeah, he probably has the best ball skills of almost like any DB in the league. Easily, with if the ball's in the air is like coming towards his hands. But the problem For is sure. he can't get himself in position to get there on most of the time, and yeah. he's getting targeted a shit ton. So, and it's funny watching him, and so he has one more target than JC Jackson, like. J.C. Jackson is playing like a DB. 600 yards, 49% completion percentage, one less target. Like, I'll take that. But it's funny when yeah. you watch when you watch Diggs even take off from the line, the way he's backpedaling, he's looking for the ball immediately, which makes sense why he has so many picks because he's just backing up looking for the ball. But it's just been so funny to see. Go ahead. You got to, like, see, like, the gifts they put in this article of, like, him trying to, like, rotate his hips and stuff like that to stay with – uh, the receivers and like this technique sees and stuff like that. It's like it's almost like Taylor Mays, like where he couldn't fucking turn. Like, oh it, my that, god, that's yeah. what he looks like. Great <laughs> straightaway speed and no turn. Yeah, but it's been funny to see people say Diggs Island because Cowboys fans have been pounding that all year. The first five weeks of the season, oh, he got five five games, five picks. Diggs Island, defensive player of the year, and then you really break it down. It's like, oh, this nigga is mid. He just got a lot of picks, worse than mid, and picks. Picks just like t- uh, touchdowns aren't sustainable. Like you, can, Devontae Adams had twenty p- touchdowns last year. You can't do that every year because touchdowns are fucking random. Devontae Adams might be able yes, to do that because he's the number one guy. But like shit like that's so random. <laughs> Being a big shit like that, so it'll be interesting to see how it looks going forward. And I could, he seems like a guy I could see in two years where Cowboys fans are like get him off the team. 
He's gonna they just got to get the shit sorted out before it becomes contract time because uh, he's yes. going to ask for a number and they could get themselves locked into somebody that's just not anywhere near yeah. at that. AJ Terrell being the best corner in the league is a shot because he's a rookie, if I'm not mistaken, or a second year player. Uh, yeah, second year guy. That's the from Clemson, right? Yeah, and every stat is like, yeah, he's the best best DB in the league. Yeah. Shout out Marshall Lattimore, though. My yeah. Name. Shut up. Got the blicky on him on the field. All right. Uh mm-hmm. next game we got the Packers at Detroit. Packers are two and a half point favorites, which probably anticipates Aaron Rodgers not playing much of, if at all, this game. Um, but y'all got Rodgers as your clear cut MVP for the year. Y'all y'all think Absolutely. He's yeah. God level. Yeah, I don't think Boy, there's any competition. He, no. I try to argue for Justin Herbert, but he threw for 190 yards in one game and two touchdowns, and it was like, I'm not going to cut it, my boy. <laughs> not going to cut it. Yeah, it probably is Rodgers. Um, and then yeah, do y'all think the incredible. Packers are probably I, – I don't want to say the favorite, but do y'all got the Packers as your team coming out the NFC? Do you think somebody can beat them in the playoffs this year? I feel like they always fuck up in the playoffs. Yeah. I don't trust them in the playoffs. Exactly. Same. Same. Exactly that. Same. I was listening to Balmani and um, Foxworth talk about it today, and they were saying the Packers yeah. build their uh, team to like win in the regular season because it's good weather, and then you get home games at Lambeau, and you can't fucking run the ball. They got AJ Dillon this year. Maybe it can be different. So they got a different. Uh, they got a defense this year. It could be different, but I think if the Bucks got to go to, or if the Rams got to go to Green Bay, both of those teams could probably win there. So it'll be interesting. Philly, maybe? I don't think Philly can uh, score with them like that. But No, nah, they'll beat the Rams just because Matt Stafford will be get like NFC North flashbacks and be like, oh, my oh God. My God. No, no. Matt, get me out of here. I, I'm, so, I'm, I'm going to high-five Jamal through the camera because me and Jamal have been on the Matt Stafford really stinky train. And, <laughs> and he tries his hardest to be stinky. The team is good this year, sure. But it's it's really like down the stretch been despite of, or in spite of him. Instead of because of him, no, it, it his he's like it's so his bad performances should not exist on the same like game log as a player who has his good performances. It doesn't make any sense. That first game of no. the year, I was like, oh, the Rams are about to win like fifteen games, and then the last game they played against the Ravens, it was like, oh, okay, they got fucking Jared Goff out there again. Yeah, I've never seen somebody play like simultaneously like an MVP and like like a. I don't know, but top a thirty-five quarterback at the same time. Yeah, yeah like it's <laughs> yeah, they it's call impressive. him Stat Padford. <laughs> they do call. He never chose to do that in Detroit though. Is the mean age? Shit, and I, I, shit I, else. Hey, shout out to him though. Beating the Ravens last week, he has eleven wins against winning teams in the league in his career. So shout out to him. Um, we got the Bears going to Minnesota to play the Vikings. Minnesota's two and a half point favorites. I know Justin Fields has COVID, so he's not playing. Uh, I believe Kirk Cousins is coming back from COVID, so he will be playing. So he'll probably throw for five. Oh, is he black? For no I didn't know he was back. Yeah, he is, he is uh, semi confirmed back. I think he's activated off the COVID list, but they haven't said if he's playing. But he's bitch, I'm out my plexiglass coma. I don't give so, a fuck about this game. This game is a. <laughs> I don't either. Shit, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you about this game. But. I imagine that Mike Zimmer's getting fired this offseason. Like, there's he's probably his done. attitude. They, they didn't do, his his they didn't attitude the voice, last man. half of the season. Like, they asked him, uh, "Are you excited to see Kellen Mond play in the final game of the season?" He said, "No." They go, "Why?" He goes, "I see him every day. Fuck that guy." So I can't imagine that uh, that Mike Zimmer is back. Among yes. the jobs that are either open or soon to be open, which I'll list for you guys, where would you rank the Vikings? So. Jobs that I think will be open this year or already are the Vikings, the Bears, the Raiders, the Broncos, the Jags, the Seahawks, and the Panthers are all teams I think will be looking for a new coach this season. That's Where the do you guys have the Vikings ranked right among that? Just yeah, that's them. Diggy. You just named the hell off. Top oh, third. Is pussy. All right. Well, I have the Vikings three. I have the Broncos one, the, the Raiders two, and the Vikings three out of those guys. I didn't Fair. post it in the I didn't post it in the outline because I didn't want you guys to get a head start. All right, Bitch. Uh, but yeah, fuck that game. So <laughs> next, <laughs> next we got the, <laughs> you complain every time I put stuff so you guys can see it ahead of time. Now look at you. 
All right. I'm uh, gonna what you don't see. Don't you what that means. <laughs> so we got the Colts going to Jacksonville to play the Jags. The Colts are 15 and a half point favorites. Now listen to this. The Indianapolis Colts have not won in Jacksonville since 2014. What? They have not won in Jacksonville since 2014. That's Matt. No that's, a, that. that's at that's Andrew Luck. That's uh Phillip Rivers. That's Jacoby Brissett. That's Carson Wentz. Oh, Carson. That's some no, that's no, some good TVs. Hey. Oh, you're right. It's not Carson. My bad. Uh they it is not us, Jonathan bro. Taylor either. So we'll see how it it's goes. It's the clown game, though. It's the clown game. Highlight that. It is the clown game. Uh, the oh, one, hey, of, one, one of the sponsors shit. of the Jags was like, "Yo, take my name off this team, you bitch." I don't know these <laughs> niggas. <laughs> Are you getting painted up, Jamal? What's up? You ain't gonna do please. It remotely. Oh, please look like a juggalo I got, for me. I got, I got, I got the AV, but I got the clown <laughs> AV. But uh, nah, uh, I, I don't think they, for like betting purposes, I think we cover, but we gonna lose. I do too. I think you're gonna lose, but fifteen and a half. 15.5 points is a lot of points to give up at home. That's hella points. Um, Jamal, what do you think the Jags are doing this offseason? Like, what's, what does a good Jags offseason look like for you? Fire in the GM. Dog. That's it? Did, he, has, he has a bad reputation. Like, they're I was listening. Albert, Albert Breer was on the Rich Eisen show talking about there are coaches that don't want to work with Albert, not Albert Breer, but they don't want to work with uh, Trent Balky because they say he uh, was doing Balky. shady stuff with uh, San Francisco. He was the 49ers. Was stabbing people in the back and like they think he's already been like heard about that. leaking stuff there. Yeah, they, I guess he has like a really bad reputation. He was messy as fucking his way out of there, I'm pretty sure. I think um the... Yeah. What's his name? His name was Ant- was it Anthony Davis? What was his name too? He used to be the right tackle for the Niners. I think he said some shit about him on the way out. He used to be like really active on social media. That sounds right. Yeah, that sounds familiar. But yeah, no, yeah, they're saying like there are coaches that like are like turned off by the job because of the GM there, and people that don't even want to interview because of that. So honestly, the best thing Shad can do is a uh, fire Trent Balky, man. That's the number one thing I believe. Who would well, obviously you still got to have players next for the Jets. All right, all right, man, get the Bill, fuck out Bill here, O'Brien man. gets the head coach and GM job. I don't want Bill, Bill O'Brien, O'Brien is all elite. I don't want. I, yeah. I either want Jim Caldwell or Doug Peterson. Doug, I think Doug Peterson could do a good job there. Jim Caldwell, yeah. I think too, but he's been. I think Jim Caldwell, like, I think he's like, now, think. he's consistent, yeah, but still, like, the last. I don't what, think he's going back for that job, dog. Yeah, after being in the Lions, he's not coming to a fucking cursed franchise. And, and he I, be on the Broncos. Quite frankly, I think he deserves a better job than that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, I agree. I still can't believe Detroit fired him though. Like for his record, it was crazy. But they have still yet to win as many games as he got fired for winning. Tyrell, that's insane. On on your screen, Tyrell, when you talk, can you see like your little voice thing? Like you know the line coming from your thing. Yes, I can. Okay, it's not showing up on mine. Hopefully, it doesn't mean anything. Oh yeah, I can see it every time. Um. All right. So next game I got is Tennessee. Going to Houston, it seems like every good team is going to play every shitty team. Like all the good teams in the division are going to play the shitty team in the division for some reason. It's a division um, game. This going one could to be Houston. tricky. Tennessee is favored by ten and a half points. Um, I think it could be tricky. I don't really have have any thoughts on this game. Um, what do y'all think adding Derrick Henry back to this team going into the playoff does for them? Ain't gonna fucking like, matter. They're losing this game. <laughs> no, he's not coming back this game. I don't give a fuck about this game. He should be back for the first game of the playoffs, though. You think so? You think the Titans are losing this game? Yes. Uh, I don't know, man. Why? So? Uh, I think Just I still. Uh, why do you think so? Just because it's a tricky uh, division game. They're they're playing I for the one seed, mind don't you. Trust them. I don't know, like. Ryan Tannehill has not been good this year. I don't know how they're still eleven and five. Like I agree. I I thought that going into the uh, the Dolphins game, and then they beat the shit out of the I, Dolphins. Yeah, I think they fucked Texas the Dolphins like, up last week. One last like f you in them to to a team that shouldn't <laughs> uh, lose to them. I could see that too. I could see it. Davis Mills got to show out and make sure he hold on to this spot for Airbender comes back. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> airbender. Fucking airbender. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, that's I that's a tricky one, but I could definitely see the Texans like maybe pulling off the upset. I yeah, I don't, I don't trust I don't the Titans this year, man. I thought this was gonna be like the year, like yeah. like Ryan Tannehill kind of like will show that he's like a you know he's like numbers wise he'll be like oh he's a top ten guy, top eight guy, but then I feel like this year he just hasn't he just hasn't done it for me this year. I know they had agree. injuries and stuff, but I feel like he's better. Like, so we're expecting him to have Julio and AJ Brown just to kill. But I feel like he was better. He's better than how he should be playing without those guys missing. I feel like, yeah, Julio was so bad though that it's yeah, it's, and he's just been hurt too. You got to. He's been hurt for so long. He's been bad for so long. He kind of got a hurt for six it. years. <laughs> I wouldn't true. say six um, years. No, Tannehill for sure is. That's always the thing. Yeah, Tannehill for sure is underperformed. But they're the one seed. Like, they have home field throughout the playoffs right now. They have the bye right now. They got to win this game if they want to keep the bye. Because if the Chiefs win and the Titans lose, the it swaps. And the Chiefs get home. It's one of the softest one seeds I can remember in recent, recent memory. For sure. I agree. Because it's I, like when, when Braun would like uh, when the Cavs would be like the five seed or the four seed because he was like coasting or whatever, but yeah. you knew whoever was once he was going to get their stomach punched. Like yeah. <laughs> this is that. Okay, so uh, my last question for them was: Do you think the Titans can win it all? And I think both of you just answered that for me. Even yeah. with Derrick Henry coming back, you think there's no shot? No shot. There's no a, chance. Okay. That's just okay. what you get. No chance at all. All right. Uh, next game, I have no notes on, but the football team, soon to be renamed, uh, going oh, to God. New York to play the Giants. The football team is six and a half point favorites. I think the football team will win this. The Giants are cooked. They stink. <laughs> yeah, no, the Giants fucking suck ass. Um, they're gonna they're 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 finna get their ass whooped. I don't think Washington is good either, but I I'm just so low on the Giants. The funniest quote. The, the funniest quote hit this week because Joe Judge came out and was like, "Hey, you know, I got guys calling me that played for us last year uh, who want to come back, or they're sad they're not here. You know, this this team's not checked out. You don't see uh, golf clubs in front of guys' lockers, and then the next day they cut a guy for having golf clubs in front of his locker. Yeah, man, niggas just what a fucking lying, joke. Bro. What a fucking joke. Yeah, no, that, yeah. that list you made of my bad. Go ahead." No, no, I said yeah, they, they, they suck. That's all I was saying. That, that list you made of the vacancies, the jobs. This is a bottom third job, the Giants' job. And I didn't put this on there because they said three weeks ago that Joe Judge and Daniel Jones are both coming back. So it's like you're not going to fire them, okay? But if it was available, it would be a bottom three job for sure. I it might be the worst. It might it's easily worse than the Jags. Um, who did I? Yeah, I had the Seahawks as the worst job and the Panthers right before them. I think it's worse than both of them. You think yeah, is the worst job? Yeah, for sure. I th- they have no draft. You think it's worse than the they... Giants? No, oh, I the, Giants the Giants got the, they were gonna have... That's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. The I Giants are saying Giants they're a lot of money spent just from when I um play with they them. Do. And they don't have a lot yeah. of money to spend. They spent a fuck ton of money this off season on Kenny Galladay, who has zero touchdowns and like 600 yards. Gotcha. Kenny Galladay has Kenny Galladay has less like yards Kenny than JC Jackson too, man. He's always hurt. I drafted him in fantasy, and he's either going to win you the game or not play. I thought he was going to step up. All right, he's going to be a number one. Nope. He was the number one (laughs) with a bunch of number fives. Um, All right, Pittsburgh (laughs) is going – Pittsburgh is going to Baltimore. Uh, Pittsburgh – or, sorry, Baltimore is favored by five and a half. As of my time writing this, but after I – he is not. After I wrote this, uh, oh, shit. Lamar is not starting. Tyler Huntley starting this week. That offense hasn't looked much different with Tyler Huntley playing, though. Um, yeah, honestly, Tyler Huntley's kind of looked okay. Keeping that above. really good. Lamar is probably, yeah, not probably, Lamar is still better. And Lamar can yeah. do, th- would have probably looked better in a game yeah. where the Rams threw three interceptions. He probably would have scored more than 19 points. Um, yeah. Healthy Lamar's better. Relax. Lamar yeah. this year? Lamar this year has not looked great. I don't. Dog, they've had Lamar's, a bunch of like hey, all their weapons have been like gone and shit too though. Sure, they've sure. been gone for Tyler Huntley too. Hey. <laughs> He's looked better than Lamar. 
Lamar's been out so long, I'm willing to say Lamar has had COVID three times. So <laughs> uh, he might not come back looking like anything, quite frankly. Give him no like COVID. Look like. Yeah. Uh, he's been out for three weeks for uh, this year. Ankle, ankle and illness. Um, Big Ben's last game. So I hope he gets in main number seven. Up. Um, yeah, I don't got nothing else for this game. I think Najee Harris can break like uh, a rushing record for rookies or something like this at this game. Um, he's had a wild ass career too. Who Najee. Roethlisberger? Yeah, like beyond I mean, like I know he to talk about the the jail shit and all the shit he did. Like oh, the yeah. actual football part of it, like he's put up some wild ass fucking numbers, and among that, oh, like, yeah, he had one of the, the best seasons for a quarterback too. Like, but his for his sure. run under Todd Haley, he was like like almost yeah. five thousand yards every single year across um, five thousand yards. Phil- he was putting up fucking numbers. Yeah, Philip Rivers, Eli Manning, and uh, Roethlisberger were all drafted the same year, and they're like. I think like five, six, seven, or six, seven, eight in passing yards because they just all were going crazy every single yeah. year. Even though all of their careers are, I don't think anybody really would look at any of them and say like this guy was dominant or this guy was great, and they all ended up in the top like ten uh, all time, which is very interesting. Yeah, they. I think the where they stand, like I guess in the the big picture of things ultimately suffers because they existed in the same timeline as Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. Yeah. Andrew. Yeah. Reese. Yeah. Much. Guys who are winning rings. And throwing for all the yards, I, mean, I don't think Drew Brees is too different than, than big Ben, honestly, like as far as like career stuff, um, they're pretty similar. Um, but he yeah. Drew Brees obviously has like higher numbers, but just like on, on, if you could say greatness, they're not too different. Big Ben has two rings though. Drew Brees just being, I feel like more efficient and, and less freaky. Um, and shit, yeah, you could throw Aaron Rodgers in that in that combo. I'm too, talking about football. His, his peak. Was <laughs> there. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I know you were talking about football, but I really feel like like people who don't like Big Ben, even if it's football related, like it's part of your mind's like, yo, this motherfucker freaky as hell. It's kind of hard to separate the art from the artist. <laughs> All right. Uh, next game I got is Bengals. Going to play the Browns, uh, Cincinnati's uh, minus three. When I wrote this, fortunately, me and this Jamal is horrible both television too. Cincinnati plus three somehow. So I don't know what the fuck changed. I hope that stays the same. Um, so Joe Burrow's not playing. Baker has not been confirmed oh, if he's no. playing or not, but he said he needs surgery. Um, so oh, far, no. although all other starters are playing. So the thing I've been wondering all week, okay, so they said that Kevin Stefanski and Baker don't like each other. Something's got to shake there. They they think that both of the one of the two won't be back next year. If Cleveland, that has a top three offensive line, probably a top two run game, and a top five defense, isn't the best situation for Baker, where do you guys see him thriving? Like, do you think there's a place where he could play well or thrive in this league if it's not Cleveland? He had a reigning yeah, coach I mean, of the he, year. He put decent numbers every other year. So it's like there's, there's shit that works for him. And I would think that with what they're doing this year not being so different from last year and him having all these injuries, I think probably a team that's like run heavy um, would benefit him. Because um, what he did last year worked out just fine. But it's like this year he's looked god awful. And, they, and we know like he's, he's carrying like a ton of fucking injuries right now. He shouldn't be yeah. playing anymore. He shouldn't have been playing like probably the past eight weeks. Probably. Um, Beyond like his love yeah, of the play, but just like his injuries, like, he needs to shut it the fuck and down. Ch- quite frankly, he tore his labrum in his shoulder. What like week six? Like he shouldn't <laughs> yeah. have played past that. Well, he tried to make that tackle on that yeah. pick he yeah. threw. All right, I'm so Blake, would you take him to New Orleans next year? Uh, yeah, I think he's better than all three quarterbacks we have rostered. Yes, I'd take him. I don't think there's any way we okay. can afford him though. Um, but okay. I do think like um. Yeah, like the the labrum thing. Um, I think it has to do with like him being in Cleveland and like where their expectations was before the season started. He probably felt like he didn't want to let that down or come up short of that. So it's like, yo, mm-hmm. this this never happened here. I gotta fucking go for it. Um, and then I don't know who their backup. Well, what is it? Keenum. They have Keenum. Up Case there? Keenum. Yeah. Case Keenum. Um, and then yeah, that it, having Case Keenum there, a guy who's had playoff success before, 
um, it being your contract year, there's so many reasons why Baker probably just said, I'm not shutting it down. I'm going to keep going to his own detriment. Um, okay. And I, yeah, it does I think seem shitty bad. that Kevin Stefanski keeps saying, like, Baker told us he's ready to go. Like, he keeps putting the blame yeah. on Baker when it's like, if are you watching practice? Like, are you seeing him look how he's looking? Because he don't look good. Are you watching the games? Because he don't look good. So that's – it'll be interesting to see how that shakes. Um yeah, you don't want to take the and, ball at your guy's hand in his contract year because then I think it's just it, it's probably a bad look on their part too. So they're like, hey, if you're gonna be a leader of the team, you're gonna be this captain, you need to make the decision that's best for the team. So make the choice. Like, and he's making the wrong yeah. choice, but he's making the choice. He's <laughs> making a choice for sure. Um, yeah. and I think you probably answered my next question, but do you guys consider because of where he was drafted, would you consider Baker a bust? Being no. the number one overall pick. Number one, because he's had like decent seasons and stuff. Like a, a buzz yeah. for like number one overall is like like Jamarcus Russell shit like that. But you, like, I so you think it's got to be like out the league as the number one overall? Yeah, no return yeah. on okay. the pick. They've got return okay. on Baker. He's been yeah. he's had two good seasons and two one one bad one and what one mid one. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, probably that. Yeah, and I I, I, I agree for sure. I just wanted to know. What I would because I wouldn't say because I wouldn't consider Alex Smith a buzz for a number one overall pick like. He didn't end up being a solid pro. It took some time I for him to do, develop. And I agree with I, you, but I still consider him a bust just it, because of it was – he shouldn't have had that job anymore, but the coaching changes happened. And they yeah, were, but they were saying this – they kept saying this because uh, he kept, he never had the same offensive coordinator and he kept, they kept having so many different coaches. Like, that was, like, fucking up his development. And I want some of that stuff, like, settled possible, in. You started seeing him. But I think no, he, he can be a bust chances, without it being though. all your fault, though. I think you can be a bust without it being your fault. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, yeah. Alex Smith's best – seasons came for a different team like you busted for that team you you're you as a player weren't a bust but like the team that spent a number one overall pick on you you were a bust for them and i kind of feel like that'll be the case with baker because i could easily see baker going somewhere else and being substantially better than he's been in cleveland well he's had hella talent like he's supposed to be the best right now yeah he has he has and he's had much better than he had he had 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 hugh jackson as a coach uh Stefanski won coach of the year, the one year that Baker looked good. So I don't know. Mm, we shall yeah. see. We shall see. All right. I'm going to blow through a couple of these next ones. Uh, New England's going to play Miami. New England's seven or, yeah, seven point favorites. I kind of think that's actually Miami interesting will, game. It will be yeah. interesting. And I think Miami could cover because Miami always plays New England tough there. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, Miami beat New England by one. Week two this year, so it'd be the Dolphins being the only team with a seven game losing streak and a seven game winning streak in the same season ever. That's crazy, incredible, incredible. Incredible. And guess when Tyrell bet on them the one week they lost after the seven game (laughs) streak? Come nice with that. Shit, yeah, I bet bet on losers. If you could win on losers, I'd be fucking nice. (laughs) I let I I talked you into last week too. You're welcome. You technically can bet on losers, right? You just put the winner on the other side. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, you can. You can. Hey Blake, come bet for me, bro. You got this. Can't do it. Um <laughs> uh, the Jets. The Jets are going to play the Bills. Uh the Bills are 16 and a half point favorites. That's uh, too high. I think the Jets will cover, but then I looked it up and they scored they beat them 45 to 17 the last time they played. Um so who knows? Hey, man. But the Bills the Bills the Bills look shaky, and the only thing they have to play for is uh, New England can swap places with them. New England could be the four seed. They can be the five seed, which probably doesn't matter that much. Um, but Josh Allen, it's cold boy. Places. Hey, Josh Allen looked good as hell last week, and then he also looked bad as hell last week. Threw three picks, two rushing touchdowns. Um, wasn't ideal. Was not ideal. Speaking yeah. of teams that did not look good last week, the Panthers are going to play the Bucks. The the Bucks are eight point favorites at home. Over, they probably cover. Over. Or, sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my favorite game of the week because I why not? The Saints going to Atlanta. Somebody will probably get beat up in the stands. Uh, the the nah, Saints. Somebody's are... getting beat up at the stands at your game. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> okay. I said beat up, not murdered, sir. Um. <laughs> The Saints are four and a half point favorites at Atlanta. Uh, Taysom starting. 
Matt Ryan. I can see that game going either way. Honestly, I think I might. I don't know. I can see Atlanta winning that game. Well, I bet yeah, all Pitts is, I think, 59 yards away from having the most yards of all time for a rookie tight end. Which is funny because it's been the quietest shit ever. Like, we were, everybody was so hyped about him coming in. It was like, meh, okay, he looks all right. And it's like, no, he's been, he's been fantastic. He's been as good as you ain't getting TD. Stay the fuck away from me. Yeah, he has one, one touchdown. Yeah. Hate to see it. That's Um, a big motherfucker. He'd be running down the sideline looking like a receiver. (laughs) He does. Seattle's going to Arizona. Arizona's six and a half point favorites. Arizona needs to win. I hope they just back on them. Arizona yeah. leaves. Russ is back, but is Russ really back? Uh, he hit DK three times last week. Was it three times or four times? Ah, uh, it was three. I think it was Run three times the in the first quarter. Up, or Rashad Penny's <laughs> finally returning value on that pick. Wait, who did, who yeah, did they play cool. last week? Wait, who did they play last week? Don't matter. Don't matter. <laughs> the Lions? The hell out of here. Oh, man. Uh, Amon Ra, oh, yeah, St. Brown also them. gave them 215 yards on the other side of the ball, so we'll see. Don't matter. Uh, San Francisco is going to play Los Angeles. Uh, the Rams are, my, are four point favorites. If I'm not mistaken, I think. Um, God damn it, why am I blanking on his fucking name now? Kyle Shanahan, I think, has beat Sean McVay every time they've played since they've been in the same division together. Mm. So we'll see. We mm. shall see. Um, Trey Lance playing this one or Jimmy back? Tra- they haven't said. I know Jimmy is available to play, but he has a torn ligament in his thumb, so probably shouldn't. Trey play. Lance much improved yeah. over the last time that we saw him. He looked way better last week. He he played the Texans, yeah. but he looked way better last week. Yep, he's sure. about a step away from I think Jimmy really feeling threatened about his job. And that can happen this week, or it can happen. That over can the happen summer. this week. That can easily happen with a win this week. <laughs> if he wins this week, Jimmy should be shaking in his boots. Yeah. And then, uh, hey, man, last game of the week, uh, game of the week, uh, Los Angeles Chargers going to play the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, when I bet on this game, the Chargers were three-point favorites. They're now two-and-a-half-point favorites. We beat them by 14 last time we played them, and we should – Whoop their ass. I don't think they're good. They can't run the ball. Uh, they can't really pass the ball. They've scored 20 points three times this season. Uh, so unless they get a pick six, Justin Herbert is li- very likely whooping their ass. Uh, Just because you're saying this, all these things are about to be the opposite. Yep. I am documenting that we are going to lose by 17 points. All right? We're going to get our fucking asses kicked. Texans game. There's another game that was bad too. I don't even think I was talking spicy the Texans game. I thought I wasn't. I was just like, whatever, we should win the game. I was talking spicy the Ravens game though, for sure. I know I was talking. Was. Yeah, I was, no, yeah, I was for yeah, sure talking, talking spicy the Ravens. Crazy game. that week. And I and I thought about not coming back. I thought about not recording another episode of this podcast. Um no, nah, I think I think the Chargers should and will win this game. The talk of the week has been that there uh if the, the Colts lose, we can both tie and we can both make it into the playoffs. The Chargers got to win or tie to make it in because we got the tiebreaker over the Steelers. Uh, we're the better team. Like, th- that's kind of it. Like, we're just a better team than them, and we should win the game. They they literally don't score points. Like, they barely ever score over 20 points. We should just beat them off that. So, what y'all got we'll for Hunter, man? A Glock. All right. Good luck. No, nah, we, nah, we, we might not Darren have none for Hunter. Anyway. We not, Darren Waller sh- is – Gonna be his first week since Thanksgiving if he plays this week. We Schmidt now. So we'll see if Darren Waller plays. He was limited participation at practice all this week. Yes, I've been paying attention to Raiders practices and uh, Raiders injury reports. We should That's win this hilarious. game. Uh, I, <laughs> the worst part about the Chargers is there's a world where we win this game by 31, and there's also a world where we win by uh, lose by 15. So. Not really sure what to expect. Uh, fuck every Ra- seventy five <laughs> yards. <in. laughs> fuck every Raiders fans I know. I'm watching the game with a couple of Raiders fans this week. So if I catch a a, a body and a count, I'm gonna need y'all to to put something in on my books. Cash app uh, hashtag broke brother, please. If the parlay hits, we'll get you out. 
Hey, but I will say, I've talked about several times this year. I hate playing in primetime, even though Justin Herbert plays his best. There's nothing more stressful than everybody you know watching your team play. Because, like, people who don't ever watch your team are going to be watching my team this week. So I'm going to be getting texts throughout the game about random shit. Why, oh, who the fuck is number 35? And why do you get tackled for a loss of seven? I mean, get off my dick, nigga. Fuck out of here. Hey, if I ain't talked to you about football this season, don't text me. All right? Don't text me. <laughs> I'm going to send you a picture of my butt. Fuck out of here. That's a good rule. Hey, uh, your boy uh, Slater was the highest graded player like of any position last week in the NFL. He uh, likely will be an all pro this year. It's my guy, man. Yep. He's looking great. He's looking great. I'm excited to see it. Speaking of PFF grades, Joey Bosa and Nick Bosa had the same PFF grade on the season, which is kind of funny. 89.5. Moo. <laughs> Racist. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> Only one time I support white supremacy. Don't you understand? That you, Jake? Well, it's going to be a good, good week for football. That is the main game I'm watching out for, though, that Raiders and that Chargers game. Good. I'm watching this Eagles Cowboys game. Yeah, pull no up the cheers and UP. We about, we, we about to be turned up. No I've matter how good one of the teams are, it's the NFC East Finals. So someone's going to regress to just stupid. <laughs> I think the Eagles are going to win, dude. I really think the Eagles are going to win. And they're seven point underdogs. I took the I took the plus seven. I think they're going to win. I think I like the Cowboys just because of like Dak's numbers on against divisional opponents. Dak is a god in the NFC East. That's true. That is true. Strong, but he don't got Trayvon Diggs to give him the ball back. So we'll see. And he's not gonna have Mike Parsons. That defense is gonna be depleted. Jalen Hurts will oh, run for like one eighty. Defense might be I better know. without Diggs. <laughs> not without Michael, likely, though. likely. Not without not Michael. Without Michael. That's, that's yeah, fact. without Diggs, possibly. Without Micah, not a fucking chance. Mm-mm. All right, that's all I got for football. Um, we'll be back on Monday, depending on how Sunday your night goes. Oh, hey, if these oh parlays hit, yeah. I won't be back Monday. All right, so <laughs> fun little story time, right? So me and Jamal, uh, we went to the Emerald Queen. We were we were at the little kiosk putting our bets in, right? And you know we haven't. Jamal's won since he went to the Emerald Queen. I ain't won nothing. And I'm at this kiosk in the middle. Some dude walks up to me, looks like my old high school football coach. He taps me on the shoulder. I'm like, yo, man, what's up? He goes, hey, are you from Tacoma? I was like, yeah. Doesn't say anything for a second. Pulls, pulls something out of his back pocket, goes into his wallet, pulls out a, a folded up ticket. He goes, hey, man, I'm going to give you this parlay. It's going to hit. Hands me his ticket. I was like, oh, shit. Okay. He's like, you just go ahead and copy that. He played twenty dollars on it to win ninety five hundred. He's like, "Yeah, go ahead and copy that." So I looked at him like, "I'm not playing twenty bucks." He goes, "Play five. You play five dollars, you win fifteen hundred bucks." So I was like, "Fuck it, I'll play 10. And then we're looking at it. I was like, "Hey, can I take a picture of it?" He goes, "Hell yeah, I want you to win." <laughs> so we take a picture of this ticket. We put it in. Um, so I'm gonna read it off to y'all. But the fact that this happened, like I had nobody talk to me at this goddamn casino since we've been gone. So for this dude to randomly walk up to us and be like, yo, I got something for you. Kind of feels like a betting angel dropped down from the heavens. And me and Jamal have been talking about, we're going to win one time before this fucking season's over. We're winning one. So it's a, I got to win one NFL. Two. God damn it. It's a, it's a 12 leg parlay, 12 team parlay. Cowboys minus seven. Packers minus two and a half. Rams minus four and a half. Vikings minus two and a half. Charger minus three. <laughs> Cardinals minus six and a half. Bengals plus six. So the Bengals can lose. They can't lose by seven. Patriots minus six and a half. Washington minus six. Bills money line. Bucks money line. Titans money line. Hey, listen. This episode going to come out Saturday morning. All right. Go put that ticket in. All right. Shout out to my man Al. I told him. I I told him. I'm if this ticket hits, I'm going to find you. He was like, "Okay, haha, what's your name?" He thinks I'm joking. I'm going to the casino with you every day if this ticket hits. I put ten on it to win uh, twenty seven hundred. 
If I'm not on the podcast Monday, you know why. All right? You know why. Uh, Come through, Al. Come yeah. through to the pod, Al. Imagine that ticket. You know hey. we're going to feel like jackasses for not throwing 20 on it. No, 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 no. I won't. I won't feel like a jackass. I'll be straight. I'll be straight. Hey, if this if this ticket gets to the point where the Chargers minus three are the only thing left, I'm cashing out. Quite frankly, anyway. I don't know how much they let you cash out for. <laughs> That's a cold fucking. Move. I do not trust my team. He said, "I'm out of here for y'all could hurt me." <laughs> I because you know how mad I'd be if I lost all that money because my team lost. Rightfully, I rate. Yeah, no, I would. I'd hurt somebody. But yeah, so shout out to the big, shout out, to, shout out to Big Al. Okay, shout out to Big Al. Uh, yeah, Al right, definitely right. does not listen to this podcast because we don't know this nigga at all. Never seen him a day in my life. He might, he I hope our tickets hit, dude. Hey, and money. he and he gave somebody else. He walked up to another random nigga at the casino, another random black dude, and gave him. I'm listening to what he's telling him. He gave him the right move. Me and Jamal both bet on the Nuggets winning that night. He was like, "No, nah, no, nah, bet on the Jazz. They don't got that. They don't got this. They don't, they don't got that." It ended up hitting. Me and Jamal lost that night on that. Do one. I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'm saying. Hey, I do think I'm going to Saturday. Damn, that's tomorrow actually. And I do think I'm gonna. Uh, I might go Sunday morning and put on for like the NBA games for Sunday. Yeah, you should go tomorrow. And bet on the Jazz beating put the, the Raptors River again. On Georgia. Say what? Put it all on Georgia. Oh, hell no. You second person to tell me that today. Georgia might win it. Georgia might win it. Yeah, one of my coworkers was trying to say Georgia's probably going to win. I'm like, dude, I wouldn't say. I feel like Nick's. No, Nick Saban going to take this personally. He about to beat their fucking ass again. It It was too close last time when they won by 14. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Let's get out of here, man. We'll talk to you on Monday. Put that ticket in, man. I'm I'm so scared right now. That could be a million dollars worth of game. 40. Ooh. Peace. Peace.